respected most honorable chief guest of this inaugural session professor dr r c bobatra gohai sir our distinguished resource person professor dr mohan rao bolla sir chairperson of this uh, workshop dr gautami dotta bora ma'am deputy chairperson pita brahma ma'am coordinators of both the colleges iqbc cell and my associate organizing secretary and the distinguished participants from all the parts of india who have gathered in this digital platform to gain some knowledge and equivalently share something to the other co participants i prasenjit brogagoti joint organizing secretary of this workshop welcome you all to this five days national workshop on intellectual property rights jointly organized by internal quality assurance cell of dr rkb law college and kokrajhar law college this workshop has been motivated to create some legal reasoning and to know something more than what we know till date regarding intellectual property rights so in order to know all these things we have invited five distinguished resource person from various parts of india who are having more than 30 to 40 years of experience in dealing with this particular subject so i'll not make it a lengthy part but before going to it i'd like to introduce i'd like to uh, inaugurate the session by uh, asking our deputy chairperson pita brahma ma'am to deliver her welcome address thank you prasenjit uh, good morning to one and all present my name is pita brahma deputy chairperson of this workshop on behalf of both the colleges and organizing committee i take the privilege to receive and welcome each of you to the 5 days national workshop jointly organized by iqsc cells of dr r k b law college and kokrajhar law college media partner lindislaws.com at the onset i would like to take the opportunity to welcome honorable professor dr r c borpatra gohai sir the advocate general government of assam he was also a dean hod faculty of law guwahati university and thereafter he had joined as the advocate general in the year 2017 november he is an eminent teacher and also a learner of law respected to this speaker professor dr mohan r bolla principal christ jayanti college of law bangalore i welcome you sir to our five days national workshop and thank you for accepting our invitation as an invited speaker i would also take the privilege to welcome all the speakers professor t ramakrishna professor of law and chair professor ipr nlsiu bangalore dr m n bimesh sir senior advisor almt legal advocates and solicitors bangalore professor srinivasulu sir professor of law national university of juridical sciences kolkata and dr nilul pal deka the advocate of guwahati high court respected chairperson and my organizing team and heartfelt gratitude for putting up a thoughtful event for the students teachers and all others i take the privilege to welcome our participants including my student friends and learned faculties and all the persons involved in other kind of employment for participating in this 5 days national workshop the main objective of this workshop is that as we all know intellectual property rights deals with the laws and safeguards to provide protection and recognition to the creation of human intellect because we as human would want to develop create invent or author some writing sculpture software designs etc but at the same time we must also know that we can claim protection for those creations and obtain unique identification therefore this platform is been created to give awareness to the persons 
those are interested in knowing the available measure to protect and recognize their work. Also, this is to aware the importance of subject IPR and encourage the human intellect to create and contribute to the society for the growth of the economy. Hope this national workshop will help each one of us and understand the various aspects of IPR laws. Best wishes to the participants, and I hope that each of one of us will be able to successfully complete this workshop alongside abiding all the rules and regulations. So thank you and welcome once again. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, ma'am, for beautifully addressing the gathering <laughs> by also stating the object of this particular workshop. So no, now I'd like to invite Dr. Monomita Paul, ma'am, to uh, start with Saraswati Bandana so that we can uh, we can start with this workshop properly. <laughs> Advocate General of Government of Assam and former HOD and Dean of the uh, Department of Law, Guwahati University, to address the gathering. Good morning to all. I first express my sincere thanks to the IQACs of RKB Law College, Dibrugar, and Kokreja Law College, Kokreja for giving me this opportunity to be a part of such a national academic discourse. I'm highly delighted and also congratulate both the institutions such an important such a national seminar on this important issue of intellectual property rights. To my mind, as an ordinary person, Intellectual property right is a right. It encompasses everything that human intellect creates. Here again, as a student of law, out of my long experience being associated with the law for the last 40 years, my realization is that we will have to look and approach this issue from two dimensions. One is the conventional dimension or the hindsight approach of the materialistic aim. Second is the far-sighted approach, approach of creative thinking that is what is needed at the present context. Even the University Grant Commission is also trying to bring such an intellectuality or creativity in the line of thinking, line of doing research, and line of creating, generating, and innovating something new in the world. So in this, when you talk of intellectuality, it is speaks about a perception. It isn't based only on logic, because logic is an approach of hindsight. Whatever is in existence, if we are going on analyzing, that is what 95% of the academic in the higher education, we people are doing. But then we'll have to change this approach and approach to answer perception of new ideas, new innovation, 
new generation in all fields and especially in this intellectual property right it is most important knowledge is important but there is a ladder of knowledge as an academician we must approach to that and that ladder starts with academic knowledge being exposed to different types of literature then experience being associated with learned people then after that we will have to climb to the higher level that is the level of realized knowledge and after that realized knowledge we should try to climb up to the transcendental or the spiritual level that is what is needed today now the mechanism through which we are trying to discuss on different issues with this digital process it is compelled by the course of nature as because we are not giving much emphasis to the spirituality of environment such is the result we are facing with but then the contentment that the science and technology is making us advance and that is why only on the materialistic perception we will have to go in the process for the future and that approach will have to be changed it is a reminder by the course of nature and we call the wisdom what is wisdom wisdom is act according to law of nature human beings are creatures of the nature and we will have to maintain that and as because we are going beyond all limit these are different types of warning we are getting from the nature to be content with second that intellectual property rights can it be approached from human rights perspective to my mind yes it can be and it should be approached from human rights perspective on two domains in the international level we are talking about human society there are different types of efforts to pacify the human mongering tendency towards destruction towards materialistic gain and prevailing over by one over the other and that tendency is to be resisted and that is why in the international level so the first declaration of human rights article 27 of that along with 26 right to education it speaks about that there must be an environment where moral and economic rights of every individual and including this intellectual property rights of every individual should be well protected and that is the international norm based on which the national level laws are to be molded secondly the unsuited laws then also the wto world trade organization and also the wipo wipo these institutions are tremendously endeavoring for harmonizing the situation and also inculcating the, the spirit of humanism in every human being across the world that aspect is important while our constitution was drafted these things were taken into consideration at the universal or uh, international level and the preamble which speaks about that we are going to form in the into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic with certain objectives to be made available to every citizen justice social economic political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship so that thought process is included in this particular discourse i i think the learned scholars resource persons with deep knowledge will definitely highlight to this and also the participants will also augment their thinking power in such a way that this becomes beneficial to each and every person poor or rich equally black or white equally in all perspective in the human society now coming to the national perspective as i mentioned about the preamble is speaking about thought liberty of thought then equality of status and of opportunity it also mandates for paternity assuring the dignity of every individual so that creativity must be oriented towards the service to be made available to each and every human being 
to live with a dignity, live, live with dignity and honesty. That aspect is to be taken into consideration. Now, coming to the international law obligation, Article 51 of the Constitution, primarily 51C, the 30 laws, that is to be adapted into the Indian system. And to support that, Article 253 of the Constitution, it speaks to, but that the parliament has a responsibility for incorporating the ideas of international treaties and documents which India have read, entered into and ratified to be brought into a national legislation. And with reference to this, says in the seventh schedule, if we go to item 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, and also article uh, uh, item 49 and 97, to be in brief. So based on that, we will have to formulate the laws and academics will have to dwell upon doing fundamental research on this, how to develop the intellectual property right culture in our society. Then I think based on that, the lawmakers will definitely make such type of law in the near future and all the Indians will be well protected and Indians will be a guiding factor to the rest of the world. Now, Article 300, Capital A, after the 44th Amendment of the Constitution, the right of fundamental right to property has been withdrawn and it has been brought under the principles of eminent domain. There also, even if it is not expressly provided, but the interpretation of the Honorable Supreme Court, which becomes a law of the land under Article 141 of the Constitution, it speaks about intellectual property rights to be included in that particular article. So we'll have to dwell upon and basing on different dimensions of the intellectual property rights. Say, for example, in the intellectual property rights, it can be divided into two parts. One is the industrial intellectual property rights in the domain of trademarks, patent, designs, geographical indication, protection of plant varieties and farmers' rights, and also the biological diversity. These aspects, say, for example, from the Stockholm Conference of 1972, then Nairobi Conference, and also the Rio Art Submit. Based on that, we are bringing those principles into our national legal order so that these rights of these people, all the indigenous knowledge, traditional knowledge, those will also be encompassed and also the copyrights, especially in the field of arts, literature, music, and related that those matters are also governed by this particular perspective. So based on that, I think if we proceed on in terms of the constitutional mandate, in terms of formulating new ideas, new research, because in the national level, the universities, especially the law universities, they should try to promote in the direction of the UGC mandate of the reformation of the higher education. The fundamental research, they should try to convert them into fundamental research programs. And after that, there should be a database based on which the judiciary, based on the dynamic approach of those research, and also the bureaucrats, they can make, update the policies for the better man and protection of rights of those people who have created those ideas and their rights are to be protected. Of course, within a specific period of time, it can never be for once for all. Specific periods are there. Say, for example, in copyright, during the lifetime of the person who has created the music, art, letters, or whatever that might be, and 60 years, up to 60 years of his date in the Copyright Act, especially Section 22, I, I like to mention about. But then I, I personally feel that I have limitation. I cannot go to in details because all the learned research persons will definitely dwell upon those areas. Simply, it is an appeal from an experienced common citizen of the country being associated with the discipline of law and society, being deeply rooted to the social values, I 
make an appeal strongly to the resource persons and also the organizers and also the participants to dwell upon those areas for the, the remaining part of this five day program. And I think we can lead the country in a right direction so that in the future we can say to the world that yes, we are leading and you follow us. I congratulate and I express my best wishes for the grand success of the function. And with this, with a humble appeal that endeavor will be made for different dimensions of this present subject, which is very much important because the prior I see then many other things which are coming up, these are to be checked. And unless this society is making partic participation with the administration, with the policy makers, with the judicial process, I think the con conglomerate effort can save us from any danger that we have been in the near future we are going to face. With this, I again thank all the resource persons who are invited, all the participants, and especially the organized the IQAC of RKB Law College and Kokrajar Law College Kokrajar. And with my best wishes, I conclude my speech. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, okay, so uh, I can see other resource persons also have joined our inauguration uh, ceremony. So uh, good morning, Vimesh sir. <laughs> and uh, Ramakrishna sir, Professor Ramakrishna, hello sir, good morning. Okay. Sir, uh, Vimesh sir, uh, if you would like to kindly speak a few words before the participants and before the chief guests. Sir, please, uh, you may unmute yourself, sir. Uh, namaste. Very good morning to you all. I am very happy to associate with this program, with this uh, both the colleges from Assam. It's a very well thought program. Just now, our Advocate General has given the very meaningful insight to this program. Hope uh, the next uh, four days will be full of uh, intellectual activity from these two institutions. My learned, learned professor, uh, Dr. Mohan Bala is already ready. Good morning to you, sir. Today is going to give you an overview of it and the judicial issues concerning, followed with uh, other three personalities. My teacher, Professor Ramkrishna is also there. Sir, namaste. And my colleague uh, Srinivas will also be there. It's a well thought program. I congratulate uh, Dr. Preeta for inviting us to this program. It is very happy uh, occasion for us to associate with these two institutions and the youngsters, budding youngsters, the aspiring uh, advocates from the northeast part of India. I'm very happy. I wish you all the best. See you day after tomorrow again when I address you on patents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vimesh, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sanjit. A very good morning to all. It gives me an immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this inaugural session. Respected keynote speaker, Professor Dr. R.C. Barpatra Gohai, sir, Advocate General Government of Assam, respected speaker, Professor Dr. Mohan Arballa, sir, Principal of Christo Jayanti College of Law, Bangalore, respected chairperson, and respected Dr. M. N. Dhima, sir, Senior Advisor, ALMT Legal Adv Advocates and Solicitors, Bangalore, and other organizing team, along with the enthusiastic participants who participated in this workshop. I, Dohita Sarviari, on behalf of the organizing team, take the privilege to offer my heartfelt gratitude to Professor Dr. R.C. Barpatra Guhai, sir, for your kind cooperation. We thank you for your inspirational and insightful speech that highlights the key importance about the subject matter, which will motivate the participants throughout this program and will be remembered. 
we are grateful enough for accepting our invitation within a short period of time and allowing us your precious time to administer your busy schedule. So we appreciate your kind presence. Thank you, sir. My heartfelt gratitude to Professor Dr. Mohan R. Balla, sir, for accepting our invitation as a speaker. Thank you, sir. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Dr. M. N. Bhima, sir, for your valuable speech. I would like to convey my thanks to the chairperson and the deputy chairperson for creating this platform in order to transmit the knowledge on IPR. With this, I end my vote of thanks. Now over to you, Pasenji, for the technical session. Thank you, Duhita, ma'am. So, uh, without going doing any further delay, we are already running out of time. So, thank you all the resource person for joining us uh, in this inauguration session. Uh, so now I would like to start with our tech first technical session of day one. Mm which will be on the topic concept of IPR and judicial trend, a perspective. So I'm very happy and delighted to actually introduce the resource person of this session, namely Professor Dr. Mohan R. Bolasar. Now, I'll just like to brief out his profile. Uh, it is just the gist of his profile, actually. I'm not giving it the entire one. Professor Mohan Rao Bolasar, is born and brought up in the historic town Machilipatnam of Andhra Pradesh. He graduated in BSc from Nobel College of Machilipatnam in 1981. After that, he got his bet, uh, bachelorate and master's degree in law with specialization in labor law from the University College of Acharya Nagarjuna University with a distinction. His dissertation on the individual dispute under the Industrial Disputes Act have been adjusted the best dissertation. Professor Bolla was awarded doctorate by Andhra University for his empirical research on the topic Special Economic Zones Act and the Right of the Project Affected Families. Professor Bolla has been serving in all the three regions of the combined Andhra Pradesh as principal of several law colleges before he became the professor of law in Christ University, Bangalore. Professor Bolla had also been associated with Zan Shikshan Samsthan, sponsored by the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India, as program officer and director for many years. He has been a professor of law at Alliance University, Bangalore, prior to his inception as the principal of Christu Jayanti College of Law, where he is presently working. Being an experienced academician, he has been regularly contributed, contributing one chapter in the annual survey of Indian law published by the Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. Till date, he has published more than 30 articles in reputed law journals, in reputed law journals, including the Journal of Indian Law Institute, the Journal of Constitutional and Parliamentary Studies, etc. Professor Bolla has extended resource support in many national seminars organized by BSP, Mahila University, Kakatiya University, Andhra University, Osmania University, uh, National Law. School of India University, Bangalore, Andhra University, Acharya Nagarjuna University, and many more. He has also served as a member of editorial boards of several law journals all across India. Apart from it, Professor Mohan Rabolla is well known for innovative initiative in legal education, striving for achieving excellence. So, sir, we believe that this day, this first technical session will be of immense value to all of us and we will learn a lot from you sir so the dice is all yours sir sabha saraswati namaha thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this august uh, session the iqac cells of uh, rkb college and uh, kokrajar college especially my learner friend uh, Ms. Preeta Brahma, 
and uh, respected professor uh, borpatra gohain sir professor bhimesh professor ramakrishna sir and all my uh, professor mr harish and uh, mr gautami datta and other uh, distinguished intellectuals in this intellectual property session as per the ugc norms uh, you have taken a very great initiative to impart uh, and share knowledge with respect to intellectual property law with all the bent of intellectuality and intellectual qualities and i appreciate that and uh, let us start the session i'll be dealing with the basic aspects and uh, i'm not going to uh, deal with uh, uh, very deep analysis of uh, the intellectual property law as it is a very vast subject and uh, now the intellectual property law and uh, various authors do not find place for defining an intellectual that is a glaring issue generally speaking an intellectual is one who knows the problems and how to solve them that who raises the problem and solving solving the problems are generally considered as intellectuals and the property they are born the mental capability is wisdom as rightly pointed out by poor patra gohain sir and the so called liberty of exercising the liberty of thought when they initiate with the advancement of time that uh, indians have uh, an idea and ideology that we have we are living in this universe vasudeva kutumbakam we have intellectual property law developed in india this vasudeva kutumbakam is considerably a uh, university uh, it uh, requires that there shall be universal universalization of uh, intellectuality and uh, dissemination of knowledge and there shall not be confinement and uh, there shall be always fair use not uh, for any destructive purposes and uh, even vivekananda he is of the opinion that the oneness oneness and the strong mental capabilities with uh, the unique quality of yoga which is now universalized uh, we we have uh, vasudeva kutumbakam to prosper and uh, we are talking about intellectuals and uh, among the intellectuals we come across several such great people but for the odds they have like uh, ravana ravana uh, is uh, the uh, offspring of ulasthi brahma a great intellectual he is a great artist and he had written this ravana krita stotra of uh, several stotras he has uh, authored and uh, especially this jatatavi galajara as well known sivatandava stotra he had uh, authored and uh, had there been the intellectual property confined to him there would have been a case against even uh, the bahubali fame rajamouli and uh, we have such a plagiarism controversies uh, with respect to several movies and uh, 
uh, in this background let us look into as to what is basically known to or uh, the inclusive aspects of uh, uh, the intellectual properties they include uh, copyrights patents trademarks industrial designs geographical indications and uh, the traditional knowledge among others and uh, the intellectual property it refers basically to creations of mind such as inventions and very often even discoveries also may as well be taken into consideration but there should be some innovative thought in that whereby there can be recognition by uh, the law and uh, they, that would be a legal creation where whereby there would be protections made available to the particular person who invents them and the greatest inventions are uh, here depicted and uh, world's best inventions it is said uh, including the paper and uh, printing machine etc and uh, the uh, literary and uh, cultural works they also or uh, the intellectual properties the artistic works and talents of various people also are included in those aspects and uh, they further recognize the designs symbols names and images in the commercial arena so that there will be some catchy idea and a hologram through which a particular organization can be identified easily and uh, there is there is a scope for uh, business initiatives and propagation of ideas advertisements etc and it also uh, has been there has been recognition even the uh, even by the judicial uh, fraternity and uh, uh, there has been several definitions given about uh, the uh, recognized uh, talents as intellectual properties as it has been rightly pointed out by uh, oh chief justice oh chinapredi an artistic literal literary or music musical work is the brain child of its author the fruit of his labor and so considered to be his property and that requires recognition and protection and uh, generally speaking what about that is done in, by these intellectual property laws is nothing to nothing but to recognize and extend protection uh, for the intellectual properties and then uh, the there are international conventions in Australia culminated by trips which is followed by the WIPO and uh, let us just watch a, a conversation uh, organized by uh, a panel discussion organized by the WIPO and hello and welcome to WTO for today's topic the WTO's rules on trade related intellectual property protection the question does the so called trips agreement strike the right balance between the rights of patent holders and the rights of national governments. We're very fortunate to have with us today two distinguished experts on this matter, Celine Chalperia with the uh, Oxfam, she runs the advocacy office here in Geneva, and Harvey Bale, who's the Director General of the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Manufacturers and Associations. Welcome to you both. Thanks, Dr. Celine, does this agreement strike the right balance? Well, Oxfam does not believe that the TRIPS agreement strikes the right balance between the rights of patent holders and the rights of communities who need to have access to essential new products and technology like essential medicines. And the biggest losers of this imbalance are the hundreds of millions of poor people who cannot afford medicine because they pay medicine out of their own pockets 
and for them prices are just out of reach. We believe that the TRIPS agreements introduce very high levels of intellectual property uh, rights protection, 20 years in fact, and that that length was just not adequate um, to fulfill development needs in developing countries. And in spite of promises made to them in 1995, none of the big tangible benefits materialized. They haven't seen more research in neglected diseases that are prevalent in those countries. And that agreement has done nothing to make medicines more affordable and more available in developing countries. And all of this in spite of the gigantic needs uh, facing those, those countries where you know, today you have 39 million people living with HIV and AIDS in developing countries. And also uh, you have big, big problems coming up with cancer and diabetes. The only silver lining is that there are some flexibilities in uh, the agreement that help promote public health. But unfortunately, countries that have been wanting to use them have been faced with a lot of political pressure or uh, other instruments that have prevented them from, from, using, uh, from using those instruments. So as a result, this imbalance has gotten worse with implementation. And again, the big victims of all of this are the poor men, children, women who just cannot get access to treatment and as a result die or have you know, very prone disease. Harvey, your perspective. Well, thank you, Keith. Thank you, Celine. I think that we have to recognize that uh, the conditions of poverty are going to be a problem that we have to challenge. The Millennium Development Goals are, are set up to meet those challenges of poverty, access to medicines, health care. But TRIPS is not the problem here. Uh, TRIPS has an enormous range of flexibilities. Uh, we first have to recognize that until 2016, the 40, 40 poorest countries in the world don't have any obligations to adopt these patent uh, rules. Some have. They've decided to opt on themselves uh, as a result of different agreements or their own legislation. But I think that to say that somehow the TRIPS agreement is responsible for lack of access to medicine, I think, lies in the face of a number of facts. Uh, the World Health Organization has estimated that about a third of the world's population lack adequate access to quality medicine. And this is a very serious problem, but this has been a constant over the past 30 or 40 years. And in fact, countries like India, where the patent protection has been the weakest, has been among those countries where the lack of access has been the greatest. What we face today is a problem that people who earn less than a dollar a day cannot afford any medicines. They can't afford generic medicines. They can't afford patented medicines. They can't afford new medicines. They can't afford old medicines. So what we have to do, and what a start that has been made, is that uh, organizations like the Global Fund, the Global, the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization, are filling these gaps. They're filling these gaps with novel vaccines and novel drugs that have been produced as a result of the patent system. And what we see in India today, and China, Mexico, and Korea is the emergence of countries in the developing world who are producing, developing, inventing, developing, and producing these new medicines. So the TRIPS agreement is going to revolutionize the range of medicines that are available to poor people and to rich people. And this will be an enormous positive benefit uh, to the developing world. So in a word, I do think the TRIPS flexibilities are there and they are important. Does he make some points there that are worth considering, Susan? I think it, it's a false dichotomy to say that the problem of access to medicine is not linked to prices of medicine, it's linked to other factors. It's obviously both. I mean, I was curious a few years ago in a hospital in Mali where you had doctors and nurses put an empty you know, drugs cabinet, and basically, families had no other choice but to see their relatives die or to go out and buy those medicines. And if you look at countries that have been extremely successful, for instance, like fighting against AIDS, yes, they have given money to those treatment programs, but they've also done so in a cost-effective way. And for, to do that, they have been forced into compulsory licensing because they were unable to get reasonable prices from patent holders. And that's the case in China and that's the case in Brazil. So I don't think it's one or the other. It's both that will get medicines for all. 
I'll say why I think it's important to recognize that 98% of these essential medicines, which are identified by the World Health Organization, have been off patent for decades. So the key drugs for diarrheal disease, lower respiratory disease, people are dying by something like 4 million people a year of lower respiratory infections. None of these important medicines are on patent. All of these medicines are off patent, and in fact, if you look at the prices of AIDS drugs in Africa today, the prices of these novel AIDS drugs are cheaper in many of the African countries than the generic versions that are made by the copycat companies in India and elsewhere. Compulsory licensing hasn't been used in Africa because it's simply not needed. The companies are offering these drugs at no profit, at below profit, zero profit, at cost, below cost. So I think that uh, countries like uh, Thailand and Brazil, which are among the very few countries who have actually used the flexibility of trips, have those rights. But at the same time, I think most countries are designed, like those in Africa, uh, like uh, countries in Asia, most other countries in Asia, are developing, in fact, their innovative systems, generating higher levels of GDP, faster economic growth, are able to pay for more drugs as well as developing their own industry, developing these new drugs at home. So I think it's important to recognize that the system is balanced. Uh, for countries in Africa, the poorest countries in Africa, the poorest countries in Latin America, the TRIP system is simply not very relevant uh, because these medicines are off patent. Most of the companies that I know who are developing AIDS drugs don't even pay with their drugs in most countries in Africa or the poorest countries of the world. It's simply not economical, uh, it's not relevant, and uh, so I think the question of access has to be looked at in a balanced fashion. It has to be said that at the end of the day, we've got to do much more in infrastructure, much more in financing, because these problems predate trips. They predate them by decades. So. Um, with uh, these uh, uh, remarks from the International Forum, uh, what we we generally can take home is that the respective member countries are expected to take their own measures in order to ensure that there will be free access to medicine and uh, of patenting and uh, um, there shall not be any compulsory licensing insisted in order to ensure that there will be the intellectual process of inventing new drugs especially the immune systems which could uh, which could counter the pandemic even and that is what has been highlighted with respect to trips and uh, uh, the other intellectual property explosions uh, with respect to uh, the uh, in the intellect in the international arena uh, and uh, we have the several conventions and which have been mentioned by Bor Patra sir and uh, in uh, India we have uh, the intellectual property uh, with respect to the constitutional recognition through uh, the uh, freedom of expression then freedom of trade even uh, the personal liberty that is guaranteed under Article 21, it's also associated with it. And Parliament has been empowered to enact laws relating to patents, inventions and designs, copyrights, trademarks, or even merchandise marks, especially in your Article 246, the enabling provision and uh, the Schedule 7 specifically. And the, in the list 1, item 49, uh, then uh, Item 31, they all relate to uh, these uh, uh, the provisions enabling the state to enact the laws. And uh, list 2 and 3 also contain several provisions, several items through which there can be uh, a law enacted whereby there, there can be uh, an effective regulation and uh, no scope for exploitation of. Uh, the inventors and uh, the property right, intellectual property right holders, and uh, the the various enactments which are associated with this uh, intellectual property law, the multi-pronged, uh, I say, uh, 
or uh, these legislations which are enlisted here including the Trademarks Act in 1999, the Designs Act 2000, Copyrights Act to start with in 1957 itself, then the Patents Act 1970, Geographical Indications of Goods and uh, uh, Goods Act uh, 1999, and then Trade Secrets Act, Trade Secrets covered under the Companies Act uh, 2013, then the semiconductors integrated circuits here, designs act 2000 then the plant protection protection of plants and varieties of farmers act rights act 2001 and the biodiversity act 2002 uh, these are all the enactments which are associated with uh, the intellectual property law in general and the violation of uh, the intellectual property rights also can be read into the violations and treated as violation of uh, the fundamental rights, uh, especially in freedom of speech and expression. And Bhushwatar Bhut uh, movie is an example. And uh, let us just uh, watch the uh, trailer of that Bhushwatar Bhut movie. Perhaps you all uh, uh, have the knowledge of understanding <laughs> 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 There are some people that are good people. Who doesn't need to do a good child for that sentimental? But I am for the end. 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 So this Bhushwatar Bhut uh, movie has been in question uh, before the Supreme Court uh, in illegally creative private limited versus government of West Bengal because uh, in a dramatic uh, way there has been criticism against uh, the politics especially uh, the the the, the government uh, appears to have been getting offended and uh, there has been uh, uh, an extra constitutional or extra legal ban imposed on the movie and the finally the supreme court has come to the rescue of that and recognition recognize, recognizing the intellectual property rights in Australia with uh, the several rights including uh, article the rights uh, that are uh, guaranteed under articles uh, uh, 14, 19, uh, 1A, 19, 1G, and uh, even 21. And finally, the court has also imposed uh, a huge penalty against uh, the government. Uh, and uh, um, in order to ensure that there will be effective protection for the film uh, exhibitors and especially the producer and his team, they could uh, get uh, the uh, the justice rendered in the instant case and uh, uh, then uh, we we go to uh, a particular uh, uh, time when the supreme court was uh, uh, confronted with uh, the question of intellectual property especially the copyrights and uh, uh, the, this particular uh, um, issue uh, is also again a movie uh, wherein uh, the, the Mohan Segal, Segal he was allegedly uh, copied the theme of uh, R.J. Anand who had uh, written actually and uh, played uh, an act, uh, uh, a, a drama which has been exhibited several, in several areas including even Kalapata and uh, R.J. Anand he moved and uh, the, the court uh, and uh, he could not get the justice rendered uh, at any stage uh, uh, even even before the supreme court what the supreme court was uh, looking at um, we will we'll just observe after 
just going to a a clip of this particular movie which is in question The movie is known for uh, the provincialism and uh, the uh, disagreed integrating factors of casteism and uh, the language, etc. And the central theme of uh, R. J. Anand's um, uh, drama also was the same. And uh, the narration of the story, uh, little variations are uh, found, and uh, it is not true to spirit. An exact copy of what has been written uh, by R. J. Anand, in, uh, which is captioned "Ham Hai Hindustan." And finally, this hero he faces several uh, problems in getting even uh, uh, a room for rent. Yeah, uh, and uh, the, the every 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 house owner he tries to give only to uh, a Bengali, uh, a Madrasi, etc. And uh, uh, the hero uh, he dupes himself as a Madrasi uh, to get into a, a house, and uh, that uh, actually paved the way. Uh, the, this picturization by Mohan Sagal, uh, who has presented the movie. Uh, that has been uh, in question before the court, and the court has uh, watched both the the drama or, or it had read the, the drama on Hindustani and on uh, Hindustani, and then uh, Mohan Sagal's movie also. And when uh, the central theme was uh, copied, there should not be any objection according to the court, and the copyright protection cannot be extended to the central theme. But if there is uh, something like a Xerox copy of uh, the total uh, scenario and uh, the, everything, if it is uh, uh, copied, uh, there can be objection and uh, the copyrights extension is possibly made available uh, to that extent only. And uh, in a way, um, the way the, the court has been uh, interpreting, it has established a trend that the theme, co copying a theme cannot be objection objected even under the copyright act if one author if he strenuously or, or his central idea uh, even if even when it is copied there was no such objection raised by people by and large uh, the the wisdom of the court was exhibited in such a uh, versus that the plaintiff has not proved by clear and cogent evidence that the defendants committed colorable imitation of the play uh, according to the Supreme Court to violate uh, the copyright of the plaintiff. That is to say, suppose say if we take a textbook, uh, the cover pages are only to be changed and uh, if, they, they, if there is uh, a release of a book in such a way, uh, that can be considered as violation of uh, uh, copyright or uh, that, that, that uh, kind of issue only can be protected and uh, not uh, when there is a uh, by and large by and large copying of a particular uh, uh, central theme and uh, even the uh, play you see you see the provincialism which is uh, uh, the idea central idea is not protected according to the court that is the trend with which there there, there has been initial ideas and as far as uh, performing rights are and performers rights are concerned um, uh, the supreme court in uh, uh, indian performing rights society versus eastern india motion pictures uh, the, uh, the there is protection available as far as uh, the film is concerned to the producer and outside the film uh, the, the the film uh, uh, the, the particular lyricist or any such artist he they have uh, the personal right extended to those uh, to those uh, under the copyright act uh, that is what is uh, uh, what has been held and the justice uh, krishnair has uh, aptly explained by taking an example 
a film may be cast uh, to be exhibited as a film but uh, the pieces of music cannot be picked out of the soundtrack and played in the cinema or other theater to do that is the privilege of the composer and that right of his is not crowned in the film copyright except where there is a special provision such as section 17 clause of c so beyond exhibiting the film as a cinema show if the producer plays the songs separately and attract the audience for other reason he infringes the composer's copyright so composers and uh, the other artists rights have been duly recognized uh, it would be a kind of interpretation a purposive interpretation that is uh, uh, taken into consideration by uh, the court uh, in in his concurring judgment uh, justice v r krishna yer uh, has explained the rights of the performers uh, by way of an example as depicted in this particular uh, Uh, case and the slide and uh, then we have the uh, the conventions which were, we were talking about uh, they include paris convention bali convention and then trips agreement also and india has been a signatory and uh, they, there has been several changes uh, with respect to uh, the uh, the patents act in 2005 in june with the trips amended trips agreement and the copyrights uh, act in specific terms provides uh, for registration of literary dramatic musical sound recording and artistic works in order to extend the protection in pursuance of even the international conventions and uh, we have uh, uh, the eastern book company case um, wherein uh, there was a controversy with respect to the publication of the published or uh, uh, permitted judgments and uh, the edited versions of uh, the uh, supreme court cases um, uh, have, which have been taken by uh, the defendant uh, uh, company in the instant case and they were releasing uh, the cds uh, and uh, they, they were uh, trying to in a way uh, commercially exploit the um, strenuous hard work of uh, eastern book company and the editors of uh, uh, supreme court cases as to what what is generally um, done by uh, the editors of uh, the uh, the journal like uh, a standard journal like supreme court cases uh, is uh, even narrated at length and uh, pertinently the court was uh, uh, depicting as to what is the fine tuning work that is done in paraphrasing various aspects and even it was it was of the opinion that uh, putting paras and uh, uh, contributing the head notes with the relevant uh, um, issue that is uh, to be identified even uh, the identification of uh, the ratio decedent or the principle established in a particular case is a crucial task Of a, of a legally knowledgeable person, and that has been recognized. And that kind of work, when it is done by Supreme Court cases, that particular part of the head notes and other things cannot be duplicated and directly taken uh, by for the commercial exploitation of uh, the defendant. That was what was the uh, comment made by the Supreme Court, and therefore. Uh, The, the the particular case has been partly allowed in this uh, um, historic judgment in eastern book company case and uh, i think uh, the students uh, they deserve to appreciate uh, better and uh, may may apply no down uh, what has been laid down in the instant case and the objection uh, uh, raised was with respect to uh, the copying of the sequencing selection and arrangement of cases coupled with the entire text of copied judgments 
as published in the uh, appellant's uh, uh, journal, namely Supreme Court cases. So, in verbatim, uh, what, what is to be uh, taken home uh, with respect to this particular case is that when a person produces something with his skill, labor, and uh, it normally belongs to him, and the other person uh, would not be permitted to make a profit out of the skill, and uh, that comes within the ambit of the modern uh, uh, plagiarism uh, that, is, uh, that is to be appreciated by us all. And that, uh, to that extent, there is recognition and protection of uh, the right according to the court provision. The so-called originality according to the Supreme Court is lacking with respect to the direct depiction of the facts, etc. And on the other hand, we have the Patents Act 1970, which is uh, which has been modified even in tune with uh, the Trips uh, amended trips agreement and uh, uh, the uh, the famous uh, or the leading decisions with respect to uh, the duplication of drugs etc are uh, uh, here uh, laid down uh, taken as uh, samples. Drugs inspector versus Fijikem Labs actually Silden. Sildenafil citrate, which is uh, the famous uh, Viagra, uh, which is it's, uh, it's a generic form. It is taken uh, by the, by Physicem Labs, and without license, that they have been manufacturing this uh, Ozoman port in the uh, and that has been taken to the notice of the Supreme Court, uh, and uh, that was considered as a mere uh, um, duplication and. Uh, uh, violation or in violation of uh, the Patents Act as well as uh, the Copyrights Act, and it was a patented drug. And uh, the, of course, the uh, generic form of that is only captured, and uh, just uh, it is uh, uh, duplicated in the form of ozone and capsules, and that was uh, objectionable to uh, the uh, drugs inspector and the drugs inspector. Identified that and, uh, without license when that, that business was being done, uh, uh, exploiting uh, the uh, generic uh, form of even the drug that was uh, objectionable and uh, that uh, violates the patents act and uh, sections, especially sections 18, 27, and even uh, 18, 27 of uh, the Drugs and Cosmetics Act. Also, yes, there is compulsory licensing that is provided under these acts. And uh, then we have uh, the leading uh, Novartis case on which we have a, a great uh, discussion, uh, a panel discussion that was conducted uh, in the news hour. Uh, of, uh, we have a straight three versus three divide on this very important nice. subject. Dr. Prabhupada Naguri, CEO of Vision Intellectual Property Rights from Mumbai. Kewal Handa, Chairman of Medibiz and former Managing Director of Pfizer will be in the studio. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, uh, Dr. B.S. Ajay Kumar is Chairman and CEO of the HCG Group of Companies. He says it's a short-term benefit for India. I support patents only for the short term. Dr. Samir Kaul says government should have stepped in earlier because prices should be negotiated. Playing a very critical role. Counsel and lawyer for Sipla, Pratibha Singh. And... Uh, Senior Advocate and Director of the Lawyers Collective, also a lawyer for the Cancer Patients Aid Association, Anand Grover. Sir, my first question is to you, Mr. Grover. You are very clear. You are saying companies like uh, Novartis are only interested in profits at the expense of Indian patients. Can you elaborate your position, please? Uh, first of all, if you look at the, uh, uh, the, the present case, Novartis did not invent this drug. This drug was invented through public funded products by a person called Brian Drucker in the United States. This is an orphan drug. They got tax breaks. They did not even put even $400 million for the whole of the marketing. But they reaped $1 billion in the first year. This is not an invention. There is no innovation in it. And the Supreme Court has rightly said that this is a 
drug which is hit by 3D. It's just a new form of an old drug. It doesn't deserve any patent. Most of the companies in the US and Europe, North America and Japan, 76% of the drugs are those drugs which are new forms. These are the ones that are being patented. Therefore, in India, we brought in 3D, which says that new forms of known substances should not be patented. And this is the case of that type. The Supreme Court rightly rejected the claim of the Novartis company on, in, uh, on the other side, which is, direct, which is the drug. On the other side, you have two, two gentlemen, you know, with contrary positions. I'm going to come to Dr. Prabhu Ganguly, who actually supports these patents. He says that because of today's judgment, innovation may not take place and Indian patients will be, uh, you know, will be uh, worse off because of this. Kewal Handa does not agree with this profit-making motive thing. Tell me, Mr. Handa, here's a situation. This company, this drug called Glivic, in India, uh, it is available, a patient can spend some seven or 8,000 rupees a month and use this drug, kidney cancer patient. Tomorrow, what answer will you give to a kidney cancer patient who would overnight, had the judgment been different, have had to sell over a lakh of rupees? Where would the money come? If you also said this particular drug, yes. Novartis has given dollar 1.7 billion of the drug free to the patients in this country. 95% of the patients get this drug free. I think, and the balance 5% What's the guarantee they'll keep getting the drug? They are getting it for so long. And I think this data point that this drug is 1 billion in India is not true. So I think, I think we need to get our data facts. No, no, you answer my question. My question is that suppose a day I'm sorry, this is not correct. You want to contest? Okay, go ahead. Anand Grover, please contest. I'm coming to Pratima Singh also, please. No, uh, because this, this data was contested by us in the intellectual property of Ballet Board. Novartis did not rebut what we said. They have no answer. And this is data from Novartis itself. And this can be so-called uh, program, which is called GPAP. It's a fraud. They know it very well. That was also contested by us. They did not rebut it. Okay. So please do not raise issues which have not been reported by Novartis in the court. Don't use this television medium to push their agenda. No, I am not pushing anybody's agenda. agenda. This is a public knowledge. They have made You are. They you have are. Because you are not. You, you didn't have the chance. You had a chance to rebut it. You did not do it. And don't false uh, spread those false notions across the I, I, I don't. I don't agree with you. The Sixteen thousand patients are already on this data, on the on this drug. And if you look at the value of this drug in a yeah, they are only because you want to push that agenda. No, I don't. I don't. I don't agree with you on that point. But the broader issue. We have patients who are. Who are getting free drugs also. The uh, broader issue still remains. The broader issue still remains. That 3D has no, not been neutralized by the. No, board. no, the broader issue is very simple actually. Sameer Khan wants to come into the debate. And I thought, the broader issue is this that today there is a person who is having end stage or second stage or third stage or first stage, whatever kidney cancer. And I, he needs this drug. Now, had the Supreme Court verdict been different today, he would have to find a way to get one and a half lakh rupees a month to survive. I, I want to know the argument against. Why are you penalizing a pharmaceutical company for lack of healthcare safety net? I am sorry, I am sorry, but the reality in India is that yeah. no government of India will pay a patient. One and a half lakh rupees. No, there to get that a, drug. There, there could be a different vehicle to get this. Sameer call wants to come. Yeah. Sameer call. Who's hyping this here? Me or the gentleman sitting next? I think. To you? Yeah. I think. <coughs> gen gentlemen, good evening. As somebody who actually real time uses these drugs on patients, we are we are not talking about kidney cancer today. That may be a similar issue, but we are talking about Glivec, which is used for chronic myelitis leukemia. A cancer, the patients of which young patients actually live after they did these drugs. So, in a background of patients who, who have got more access to this saving of their lives today, you have to, I have to make a couple of points very clear. That they, I'm happy on three counts. I'm happy on the fact that this judgment today, which I'm sure that our preeminent jurists, will decide whether this 3D was applicable and you, they actually had an innovative, a, you know, increment or didn't have. But what I can tell you today is that it, this was an epoch making decision today because today this, this country is talking about patient rights. 
We, there are, we, and it, is, it has actually achieved so much of public attention that we are debating it on national television tonight. I am happy for that. I am happy for the fact that many more patients below the poverty line will, will get access to this drug. I am also happy for the product that today, if ever, that we, our own pharmaceutical companies will realize that they need to do more in the research and development. Oh, absolutely. But on the other hand, gentlemen, can I, can I just, just last, last, can I leave you with a word of caution? That rather than painting this whole thing as an East India company having come back and robbing our country, there are many products which are way away from our own research and development capabilities. And I'm talking about Herceptin, Trastuzumab, autoimmunoconjugates, Vector, and a whole lot of them for which there, there will not be a foreseeable R&D in this country. Sure, there isn't. So what I'm talking about tonight. And, and, no, I'm talking about yeah. tonight. No, no, I'm talking. My, my question is, my question is, yes. Hello. Yes, I'm coming to you, uh, uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar. Please tell me, you are saying, if Novartis is such a... However, uh, my, my take on this particular case is that the court has aptly decided the case to the effect that there has been no innovation found in the particular drug that is alleged to have been uh, doing good in the market about uh, the cancer patients. And uh, ultimately, what could be insisted is that all life-saving drugs must remain generic and there shall be no patenting permitted in order to ensure that a cancer patient or which is the, the, the cancer is widespread all over even India and uh, very, 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 very much deep into the uh, very uh, deep, and, uh, deep and pervasive into every nook and corner of several developing countries which require free, free pharma care or Medicare to be provided. Despite the fact that there is no, uh, there, there is recognition implicitly uh, uh, taken into consideration under Article 21 of the Constitution, right to uh, uh, health guarantee, but the health systems in India are not well set in order to ensure that free Medicare is provided, even at least with the generic medicines. And at uh, this scenario, uh, there's no artist versus Union of India is uh, uh, an aptly decided judgment in the uh, in the particular uh, uh, Novartis case. And uh, what is required is that there ought to be real invention uh, in order to appreciate and uh, get the recognition in the name of uh, patenting and then there ought to be the regulating measures in order to ensure that uh, they, there ought to be, they, there shall be no uh, exorbitant rise of the price because the companies when once they get the patent of the particular drug, drug they tend to enhance the price and that would be uh, that would not be uh, accessible to uh, the patients by and large and that would definitely affect and imbalance the right to uh, health that is guaranteed under uh, the, the constitution. And uh, now, uh, after this Novartis, we have uh, um, we, we, we have uh, to consider uh, the Bayer Corporation there in uh, Vern Sipla, uh, Sipla uh, uh, the company uh, which was uh, said to have been manufacturing the generic medicine. And uh, even in Novartis case, King Sipla was one of the opponents uh, which has uh, raised the issue that uh, there has been no invention. invention. But uh, the courts also have uh, the constraint of having the, the special knowledge and uh, um, when we observe these things, uh, there ought to be special tribunals at par with uh, the National Green Tribunal which would uh, be dealing with especially the uh, pharmaceutical uh, issues, uh, the drugs and uh, health related aspects and there ought to be experts uh, the uh, sitting in the uh, panel system developed uh, in the tribunals in order to ensure that there will be good uh, um, uh, there will be rendering of justice uh, by protection of uh, the uh, intellectual property rights and uh, in the, the 
counterfeiting of the drugs uh, has been condemned by uh, the Supreme Court in the instant case. But of course, at the end of the day, it had laid down that there was a generic medicine and uh, there was no um, violation of uh, the intellectual property rights. And uh, with respect to this, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Allah Subhan uh, issue, uh, which has come before the Supreme Court uh, in uh, uh, Dr. Allah Subhan versus Yogesh Mahara. Uh, the, the Supreme Court was uh, talking about the patent infringement, uh, infringement suits and uh, uh, the counterclaims and claims and uh, what the, the distinction has made out by the Supreme Court. Uh, and uh, while interpreting the, uh, the section 64 one of the uh, enactment and it had laid down that a petition by any person interested must be treated uh, valid and uh, there shall be a universal acceptance in, in public interest uh, in, in the instant case that is to say if there is uh, the question of uh, local standing viewed out there is every possibility that uh, people having uh, knowledge and the knowledgeable people would raise the take the issue before the Supreme Court as, a, as has been done in Novartis case also. And uh, the vistas of Novartis verdict has been taken to its logical end in uh, Alois uh, Uden case. And then uh, uh, we have the Designs Act. Uh, the, the designs uh, with respect to this designs act we have uh, uh, some leading decisions like uh, Nandini Deluxe versus Karnataka cooperative milk producers. Uh, in the instant case, uh, the product and the design, when the product or the service that is uh, sought to be rendered was different from that of what is being, uh, uh, what are the fields are at variance. Uh, the Supreme Court in the instant case did not uh, follow the verdict given in uh, Ramaji Rao's uh, uh, TV Venugopal case. Um, and uh, there is a different uh, verdict in a way given in this instant case, namely Nandini in Deluxe. The chaos of Nandini and the Nandini restaurant that were uh, completing uh, for uh, uh, the claim and counterclaim in the instant case and of course the Supreme Court has uh, stated that uh, the, this, uh, the, there is no copyright violation uh, in the instant case. Then we have uh, the, uh, we have Satyam Infove uh, Limited uh, wherein the SIFI network uh, was uh, in question and uh, the SIFI networks limited which is a uh, latest uh, company or a, or a small uh, enterprise which has been started uh, in the arena and uh, Satyam uh, Infoway it had uh, long long ago registered and uh, of course the Supreme Court speaking to Justice Mopal has uh, uh, rightly in a way uh, stated that uh, the first come first serve basis uh, principle may be applied and thereby uh, that was uh, a different uh, uh, case which must be taken into consideration. In, the, in this uh, TV Venukopal versus Sushodaya Enterprise, uh, as you are uh, very well aware, uh, Inadu sandal uh, sticks or incense sticks, they were manufactured by TV Venukopal and company and uh, Sushodaya Enterprises is uh, having uh, multifarious uh, areas of trade but uh, the newspaper is uh, very much uh, well known and uh, mostly in Andhra Pradesh and uh, it is also being extended to all other states but uh, the name and the design that that, that particular design of Inadu uh, was in question before the Supreme Court whether uh, there was a violation of uh, the Copyrights Act uh, when there was a, a different product with a, a different uh, package but though it is uh, um, shown to have been uh, with a different uh, uh, design uh, in order in the same way uh, on a green pack even resembling that of uh, uh, Ambika Agarbati there was that pack in that pack uh, in order Agarbatis were made available and the business was the business was running so well and uh, uh, they, there are several other products in the name of in order by, uh, by several other uh, uh, companies 
and uh, in order the the nomenclature of in order its meaning uh, in kannada and uh, telugu that, that has also been compared but uh, as the name uh, is so catchy and uh, it was associated with ushodhya uh, enterprises the supreme court was of the opinion that that must not have been used in verbatim and the same design must not have been used by uh, tv ven gopal and his company welcome back friends prasenn ji ha ah. can we continue yes sir we can continue all the yeah. participants are all available okay okay and uh, this code is uh, though it is associated they, 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 there has been some issues with respect to the delay in uh, taking up the cause uh, uh, depicting the, or uh, giving importance to uh, lex vigilante versus non normante question based on the technicalities in the earlier the case has been decided in favor of code distilleries and uh, the Uh, trademark code uh, was the and the peter scott was uh, set to have been uh, duplicated by uh, the other uh, scotch whisky association and the and uh, that was uh, with respect to uh, this code distillery case and uh, the protection of uh, plant varieties etc and uh, the protection of uh, the um, protection extended to the companies which manufacture uh, products like lace and uh, the so called fine variety of uh, potato they grow and uh, they uh, take the services of uh, the exploit even even we can say exploit the services of uh, uh, the farmers and they were suing uh, the farmers for uh, uh, growing the so called crop uh, the, the of the potato the finest quality of potato that has been grown by them and uh, uh, there were issues like that which which would even have a deep uh, deep rooting effect on impact on uh, the intellectual property uh, issues and uh, vis-a-vis the traditional knowledge and they in, indeed depend upon uh, the farmers and uh, the, uh, the the growers and they do not have the Uh, possibility of uh, uh, having the regrowth taken um, by them, and uh, that is that is a pinching area with, with respect to the uh, uh, or are in a in a way uh, the anti uh, antithesis of the intellectual property law because there is no such protection that is available when once uh, the Um, uh, trade, 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 trademark or the patent that has been given to uh, a particular company, and they they generally try to exploit even even under this enactment, which extends uh, uh, intellectual property protection to the companies, and it's similar to that of the so-called performers rights that have been recognized under the Copyrights Act. There should have been such extension of rights available to the farmers. Uh, who uh, utilize the seeds and the BT varieties of uh, the particular seeds, and uh, the, there is a possibility to uh, have uh, the so-called regrowth that should be permitted. And in this, uh, in the instant, the, the the particular case named the Monsanto Technology versus Newbury Seeds. On one hand, uh, the Monsanto and other companies have been. Uh, 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 deep inroads into the local farmers rights and uh, even the even there is uh, an unfair uh, or what do we say unfair uh, competition between among the companies uh, uh, duping the uh, farmers also and uh, with the advent of the so called bt um, biotechnology advancement there has been, there has been uh, uh, the rights of the people by and large Uh, affected very much, and uh, in the um, Monsanto versus Nojibidi seeds, the Nojibidi seeds could win the case, uh, despite uh, the fact that uh, there has been some license that has been given initially, and there could not be 
uh, a renewal of that, but yet when it is uh, manufacturing its own seeds, the, the court has uh, in a way lamented that the the particular uh, the, the case has been decided uh, appropriately uh, in recognizing the rights of uh, the new jubilee seeds in the standard case. And uh, of course, Coca Cola Company and Bislery International uh, case is also an example with respect to uh, the trademarks and uh, the, the remitted, uh, imitating of the designs and uh, followed by. This Bharat glass tube uh, versus Gopal glass works, where the glass works were uh, the designing of the glass works were in question uh, before the even the Supreme Court, and uh, uh, the, the the so called designs were to be uh, recognized, and uh, then once they are recognized, and the other company when it is manufacturing uh, such uh, models, taking those models which have been uh, recognized by the um, uh, by law, there shall not be any duplication permitted, and uh, the same technology must not be utilized. And finally, uh, the with respect to geographical indications, you are well aware that there are many places which are well known for several products, including saris, starting from Mysore silk down the line, several. Uh, uh, items that are uh, uh, recognized in the name of uh, geographical indications. At least, uh, uh, as far as geographical indications are concerned, they are deeply connected with the traditional knowledge, and uh, the, uh, there is protection given to the local uh, indigenous people and the technology. And that is a plus point with respect to that. And uh, the act actually uh, it, uh, it uh, gives protection to the the so-called uh, item which is associated with a particular place and uh, the meaning uh, extensive definition that has been provided under section 2 e of uh, the particular act is uh, noteworthy and uh, very recently the there has been derecognition or uh, what is what is that the revoking of uh, patent uh, given to uh, this uh, turmeric uh, because it is a uh, it is a known substance in india and uh, in America, there, there could be uh, with the active initiation by the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, uh, there could be uh, the working of uh, the patent that has been granted. So, uh, with all this, uh, uh, we, I feel that uh, we need to set our, uh, uh, the, the, our IP house in order uh, by uh, being cautious about uh, the duplications and uh, the so called plagiarism etc but uh, all all the all the time what is required is that there ought to be um, there ought to be trade or any such activity uh, which is associated with intellectual property protection um, not at the stake of uh, having the uh, endangering phenomena entering into that uh, uh, promoting uh, unhealthy competition and other things. And with, with all this, uh, I, I thank each one of the participants and uh, um, especially uh, for the organizers. Uh, I have uh, uh, a note of appreciation and uh, uh, a big thanks for accepting uh, or ac uh, uh, having me as a resource person for the inaugural session on intellectual property. Thank you very much. And I think uh, we can take some questions before which uh, I request uh, Harish sir to supplement some ideas. Good morning uh, to one and all. Thank you, Dr. Bola sir. Excellent presentation with good illustrations which are more informative to students uh, and uh, participants uh, on this particular IPR workshop. Uh, uh, last minute, I've uh, been able to get into your <laughs> thing. And uh, then finally, I thought I should be on this uh, uh, discussion. And uh, uh, I have two, three issues. One is uh, 
See, under the patents, sir, and the, a lot of things you have explained on the patents law. See, under patents, sir, section 3, 3K, 3D have an explicit bar on uh, patenting of computer uh, programs and, and, and some of the other uh, uh, areas. Yes, sir. As on 3D bars, uh, pharmaceutical derivatives being being barred from patent, unpatentable, they have been said. I think with the present day scenario with information technology and lot of other things happening with stem cells and other things progressing, I think uh, government uh, should think of amending this act to make these things also patentable. Well, well, that is one of my suggestions. The other one is in section 115 of the Patents Act, which provides. Uh, the courts to appoint scientific, uh, uh, take on the help of scientific advisors and on technical issues to arrive at an opinion to expedite the disposal of the cases, which is seldom happening. It is the parties who will have to bring in an expert opinion and to decide their case. See, patent uh, and life is limited. Once you, otherwise, still then the dependent enjoys the benefit of the delay of infringement of these patents. I think that needs to be expedited. The court should voluntarily really move towards a proactive uh, uh, initiative by appointing a scientific or technical expert from their own end so that there will be fair, fair de de delivery of justice on patent matters and uh, then derailment of justice, which, uh, which also is happening. And delay is causing derailment of justice itself by, by in itself. So I think uh, these, these, these two sections need to be, need to be amended, keeping the need of the R. And uh, a lot of uh, foreign uh, applicants uh, and who are applying for patents is, is almost more than double in India when compared to Indian residents applying for patent. Because there's lack of awareness of patent law, lack of awareness on trademark matters, small all eateries is are fighting litigation. You spoke of the Ashiki, uh, Ashika Agarbatis, the TV Venigopal's case. I am aware of Ashika Agarbati because I know Mr. TV Venugopal personally yes. also. Uh, yes. good, he, he lives in Bangalore South in Jainaga in, in, in Bangalore. So I know his, uh, his incense sticks issues. So, uh, uh, see, you, you need to, uh, to see that there is more awareness in public, less of trademark registration, less of patenting thing is happening in this country because lack of awareness on this. They do not know the nuances of these things. I think we need to educate. Uh, it's, uh, we are a uh, signatory to TRIPS under the word WTO, lot of things. There are challenges in protection and enforcement of patent rights in India. That's the greatest challenge, especially in the pharmaceutical sector, like the ones you, you heard on, on uh, uh, Arnav Goswami's uh, thing. Uh, uh, Pratibha Singh, Singh is today, Pratibha Singh is today the High Court judge of Delhi High Court. Mm. Uh, she is from the first batch of the five-year law course from Bangalore, mm. Bangalore uh, who was in that Navaratis uh, matter. Uh, she is the Delhi High Court judge at the moment. Um, and, uh, so I think uh, we need to create more awareness as uh, the commercial sector people, traders, community and organizations should come forward to patent and these things to obtain trademarks. As I, have a, I have a query on the trademark issues. Uh, is uh, 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 keeping slightly departing from the whirlpool uh, uh, washing machine case. It's in the whirlpool washing machine case. Uh, since it was a global name, um, after the company had closed down here in India, somebody else started that machine in, uh, and even applied for uh, uh, the trademark. And there was a litigation between the global operator whirlpool. Of course, global operator whirlpool succeeded on the ground that. But it was a prior, they had a prior user right and it was a global brand which was as a, uh, uh, creating deception in the product. Uh, deceptive similarities were there in the product like uh, uh, Taipan to Jaipan yeah. products can be deceptive similarity. At the, in, the, in, a, in, a, in a real estate field, field uh, assuming, I mean, there are two different companies who are developers. Okay, A is a developer, a separate company, B is a developer, a separate company. A and B, A, uh, B is the owner of a land and which he offers to A to develop, okay? B is the owner of a land as well as a developer, but he doesn't develop that land. He offers as the, as the, as the, his land to A, who is also a developer, to develop this property. For the development of that property X, uh, owned by B, A, A is granted permission by B to use, the, to use his company's name 
only for to float another company for exclusively for the development of this particular project uh, the property called x so in uh, once the once a uses the name of b's company for a particular project and he goes to he applies for trademark okay and <laughs> probably gets the trademark okay then b comes to know about it that my name which i had permitted him to use it for a particular project he has gone and registered it as a trademark b files against a in such a case who will who will have a, who will have uh, who will succeed in this matter who who has got a prior user right litigants like you and <laughs> a very big advocate brains only shall answer this question great question yeah you. this is for the benefit of all people that yeah, i understand you, you, i will explain that yeah i will i will just to other to illustrate <laughs> this i wanted them to uh, this is a food for thought question for all participants that's uh, a that's a good uh, uh, issue b b is the prior right prior b has a prior user right because he has licensed his name to a to use it for a particular project okay so the original owner is is b it's only a licensee in the position of a who holds this name in for that particular project only he cannot go and register it and start merging a into b no he cannot merge his original company a into the uh, the uh, to the registered trademark company of the x property which he developed and say i extinguish a and take up, up uh, the the project name project uh, uh, company of x as my original company and start trading you cannot do that because he will be the original owner he has a prior user right for so many years so he gets the benefit even if he goes into litigation on these things i think uh, this is what i just wanted to share there, there is so many such uh, litigation where prior users are right yeah that, uh, as to what i wish to supplement is there is a possibility for a company like satyam to register many domain names okay. similarly whirlpool also i feel that it is wrongly decided because when once you do not have the business and trading you have withdrawn from this particular country and uh, your uh, your registered office is situated elsewhere abroad you should not come in the way of uh, the local traders initiating even even that particular name it doesn't matter isn't it if there is the quality and other things are uh, well taken care of the local traders must be encouraged and uh, what if if you are given a particular license to use that particular name you, you don't have that uh, universalization uh, issue and uh, once you are granted a patent uh, in the erstwhile in the erstwhile times when you had business in india and uh, detriment to the interest of the local traders the, the case must not have been decided Uh, but uh, the first come first serve basis the courts must cautiously interpret the provisions of uh, uh, law and um, purposive rule of construction must be taken into consideration and uh, you can't keep anything in the reserve for the usage of uh, the brand names the designs etc and uh, uh, that uh, would in a way adversely affect uh, the societies and social so societal interest rather than Uh, any anything else must be the primary and individual interest okay. yeah 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 that is what uh, i wish to just tell and uh, okay. the other point you were uh, uh, raising uh, i did not uh, you were you were uh, dealing with section 115 of patent act uh, that's that's okay that that is uh, already uh, answered now sir yeah the 3 then 3k and 3d the uh, computer 3d actually as far as 3d is concerned uh, the exceptions are uh, political left, yeah are left to the political will of the people and uh, what is appreciated is that uh, as far as 3d is concerned the patenting process in india uh, is well appreciated and uh, uh, well appreciated because it uh, subserves uh, the rights of the people and right to health and the medication of the poor people not only in india but in the neighboring countries um, uh, almost all the members of member countries of uh, the sarc are getting benefited 
out of uh, that kind of policy and uh, the uh, kudos to the wisdom of the supreme court for uh, uh, not in a position to identify anything uh, with respect to that uh, nuance or no novelty issues uh, with, with respect to uh, naming a particular uh, thing as uh, innovative and uh, that that is what i wish to and uh, uh prasenjit sir if you have any uh, i have a last suggestion uh, bolo sir i have a last suggestion yeah. uh, uh, information to all to all participants and uh, on the colors infinity channel okay there is a beautiful program which comes called shark tank okay uh, colors infinity channel okay i think it may be season 7 season 8 i, I don't know shark tank s h a r k shark tank okay. Shark Tank is a beautiful uh, 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 program where you get to see how uh, uh, angel funding is done to startup companies by famous as uh, uh, corporate heads, heads. Uh, uh, so who are willing to fund and uh, to startup companies. So in that process, you will know whether the process is under patenting, whether the process is being trademarked, mm -hmm. or what is the product which we. I think people, the youngsters, I mean, and everybody should yes. You should view this. It's available even on the YouTube. The earlier seasons, they'll get a very good insight into how trademark, intellectual property, the patenting, and, and things happen and across the globe. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me on this. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, Hari sir. Thank you, Hari sir, for joining <laughs> Professor Bala sir. Okay. Okay. okay, sir. There is a question from Anindita Dey. Yeah. Uh, sir, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. I have a query. Yeah. Sir, many teachers of colleges write textbooks and reference where ideas are taken from various expert sources. Sometimes it is acknowledged and sometimes it is not. Do you think it is a serious breach of copyright? Yeah, at this juncture, that was why I was just a bit elaborating on what is being uh, done by the Supreme Court in Eastern Book Company case. As far as this particular issue of writing books, so I say for example, I was, I am constantly contributing one chapter along with uh, uh, Professor Anand Subramanian in uh, Annual Survey of Indian Law on Property Law. You know, what, do, what, what is expected from us is that we read all the judgments that are published in a given year supreme court as well as each one of the high courts relating to this particular theme namely property law which does not include intellectual property especially transfer of property act we take and when we when we read reread and research into various minute details that are deliberated in the judgments and the points are highlighted and uh, a comprehensive report is made made up made out in the particular survey and uh, there at least every every such point which is generally recognized by law as a principle is highlighted and uh, acknowledged and uh, th that is the process even when you read even uh, any judgment the court, when it takes a particular idea, it will definitely acknowledge and that morale shall be maintained and if there is an author who is not uh, acknowledging it, that automatically goes into the plagiarism, the plagiarism test in this uh, nowadays being conducted and uh, it in a way uh, slides away into that uh, 20 to 30 percent plagiarism accepted. Okay, I sir. think I have given the, the yes, answer. Yes, sir. Definitely, you have given the answer. <laughs> so, there is another question from Dr. Ashutosh Kundu from mm -hmm. uh, Government Law College of Assam. Uh, uh, he says that, sir, do you think that, uh, ba think that like Basmati rice, turmeric, etc., India must amend patent law to preserve Indian products? Definitely. Definitely, and that uh, that way we can we, we need to keep in view of the local indigenous farmers, as far as uh, this the, the particular kind of or variety of rice is concerned. 
we we need to protect the interests of the local farmers especially so say for example we have special provisions even uh, recognized by the constitution so for the north east states all the traditional knowledge that is uh, uh, there uh, deserves utmost protection and uh, even uh, unfortunately there are uh, they, they there is something uh, uh, very very uh, what is that pinchingly news that uh, there has been starvation deaths uh, situated uh, even uh, in uh, in some of the key states etc but but for all such uh, odds there ought to be the farmers interest indigenous farmers interest rather than the companies interest to be protected and uh, preserved and if there are uh, any such variety that is uh, produced by the innovative innovation and uh, ideas from the farmers local farmers that should be promoted and uh, Uh, we do not have proper uh, uh, protection available for the traditional knowledge we have widespread and uh, rampant in india and uh, even villagers uh, were are well known for uh, very great good uh, farming techniques uh, added added by uh, the institutions like uh, the ecrisat uh, etc and uh, that uh, definitely is a valued valid point valued point okay sir so there is another question uh, from manisha devi uh, mm. she says as we see and also it's very common that singers perform songs of various composers without their permission at various stage shows and thereby earning lot of money my question to respected sir is that whether in such situation composers copyright gets violated Yeah, um, at this juncture, uh, Justice Krishna's opinion is to be taken into consideration. And you are you are working and associated with a particular music composer, and in that team you are there. You need to sail with that particular team. And uh, if there is recognition already, uh, the co copyright is given to a particular um, a music uh, composition. Composer. there ought to be continuation of that and if you get when once you are individually performing uh, then there should be no uh, such a problem of identifying and protecting your uh, right and in, the, in this with this uh, in this uh, respect we have uh, that crown company case uh, um, to be taken into consideration okay so actually the question is uh, something very very related and Very, very applicable to us, ah, because during uh, Bihu functions, uh, the singers, any singer, come and uh, sing various songs, which have been already composed by some renowned singers and composers. So I think so. The question was directly relating to that, mm. because those singers earn lot of money by singing the songs of others. They do not have their any own composition. Okay. okay. And the public, by and large, they gen generally criticize such uh, such things. See. A particular singer uh, in a stage performance or otherwise, even even if he uh, imitates, that is a, <clears throat> that is in a way taken as a proud issue with respect to those people who had actually composed been the uh, the composer and uh, who must <laughs> have been recorded. Has it been commercializing that in a way? Say for example, the particular uh, composition of a. Part, Uh, other singer, um, uh, if it is uh, duplicated in the form of CDs, etc., and uh, I uh, start doing business on that, that is that should be objected. Commercial exploitation. Yeah. Commercial exploitation. Yeah. Stage, performance, yeah, stage performance must as well be appreciated. I think money is is an incidental task. <laughs> so another question: uh, A person has. Invented something like oven, like oven. I have already answered. Okay. Okay. Answer. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Because these kind of things uh, you will come across more in uh, Bhimesh sir's uh, uh, session. Session, yes, sir. Exactly. Uh, because Bhimesh sir is well known for uh, recognizing such uh, local talents and uh, very, 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 very big innovations. As a, for example, touching upon uh, an issue like uh, say uh, the. Ear closures uh, that have been uh, uh, in market now. That is a, that is a, 
and and Yuan's idea by a a petty a pettiest trader, a pettiest trader, and it is not trademark nor patented and nor recognized. And many companies are even without any brand name. You locate an ear closure, and that's a very great innovative idea. And this kind of things they must be encouraged. And as Harish sir was pointing it out, that woven manufacturer. Uh, should be encouraged to uh, go to such a uh, funding agency, and uh, at least we have uh, the encouragement, the minimum possible encouragement, at least at the industry center, the state, at every district you have a district industry center which will be promoting uh, the startup units uh, by offering training uh, to run uh, any particular uh, enterprise. That is called entrepreneurship development training. That training also is desirable to be taken, though it is uh, formally as to how to run a business and all that. Your innovative idea as a startup unit can be encouraged, uh, and uh, there there can be very good push uh, through uh, even identifying um, good uh, funding agencies, including the banks, private as well as the public. They have uh, that uh, particular issue. Even now, it is going on well. And when I was there in uh, Jan Section Samstan, we were instrumental in organizing such training programs to thousands of uh, youth who have enterprising ideas and artisan skills. Okay, sir. So there is another question uh, from Apurva Awasthi. Uh, what is one suggestion? Uh, Yes, yeah. Sanjit, I have one suggestion. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. More to come, sir. There is one. Yeah. There, there, there is a, uh, there is a society called Indian Performers Rights Society in India. Okay. The case is there. Which, which Indian Performers Rights Society in India, which protects the rights of collecting royalties of all composers, singers in India. So, if you want to duplicate their song CD and thing, you must take license from them. Even to play some of these things in the pubs and bars. There is a society which will grant license, without which it will infringe the copyright, and and you will be liable to cop up huge royalty for having misused and abused the other composers' songs by performing or playing it in the form of music and things like that. Even today in Bangalore, we uh, I am representing some clients who we take license to play music even in the pubs and bars and restaurants from these societies. This, uh, think, uh, along with this, uh, I think students and partners should also look into Commercial Courts Act, which uh, which will give you some more insight into how these things matters uh, does get disposed of through the Commercial Courts Act also and things like that. Commercial yeah, Court Act. Actually, the uh, other idea to uh, Sir was raising is uh, the delay. Delay is uh, only present even uh, even with respect to these specialized uh, courts and uh, the tribunals. And further decentralization is required to ensure that there that will be effective. Uh, yeah, please go ahead, Premji. Okay. okay. So, sir, so there is a question from Akurba Awasthi that he is asking that uh, what is shoe generis protection? Shoe generis. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, the matter of fact, this particular suit which has been raised. Which involves uh, general issues, and uh, when when once there is uh, a lawsuit uh, raised, or and uh, and uh, and uh, this uh, prima facie cognizance of a particular issue is taken uh, into consideration and uh, recognized by the court. And uh, at this juncture, uh, I wish uh, some practical examples may be given by uh, Harish sir. Harish sir, who is Janus? Sir, more see, uh, what happens in practical side unless uh, the participants uh, are able to go through some of these decided cases. Is uh, any any uh, example on this? Uh, they will not be able to understand the interpretation part of this. Who is Janus? You, they need to look at. That is why I said only reading patents law, copyright law, design act, trademarks act, act. All these things will will not be sufficed unless you read some of the 
uh, the uh, the uh, interpretation of statutes interpretation of judgments then the commercial courts act which is today playing a better role to speedy disposal of such some of these matters are happening to these things things are so uh, uh, i mean i probably early we can in uh, 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 mail you some details on which uh, to look up to and things like that which will be more easier for them to understand and Okay. Uh, and to elaborate on that, so generous is a unique quality with respect to which we need to take cognizance of that particular situation. Say, for example, what is uh, objected to with respect to B T uh, Brinzal is that there are several unique qualities and varieties, as many as seventeen local varieties of Brinzal are there. If there is some more, some more such a BT-based item is projected for registration, there ought to be sui generis or identification of the or under recognition of that particular quality item that is already in vogue and within the knowledge of the local people, and that uh, that that the the court takes. Uh, judicial notice of it and uh, proceeds to decide the case. Okay, sir. So another question from Zahid uh, Parvez. Uh, he is asking that can we patent symbol of political party and why? That comes under the purview, not uh, not about the uh, under the patents act, but that comes under the purview of uh, uh, the election commission. Election commission of India. Election commission takes care of every such thing. And when there is a when there is a similarity, etc., they they will definitely object. But say for example, will be you, have, you have cycle, you have a bicycle as the party symbol of Telugu Desam Party in in Andhra Pradesh, and the same cycle may be accepted as a symbol for another political party in Bihar, Samajwadi Party. Samajwadi ah, Party. I don't want to name that, but I'm telling you. <laughs> no, it's available on public. So, <laughs> see, as far as election commission is concerned, when you apply for a, for a thing, they will ask you to select the symbols which are which are not already obtained. So, like how you go for Companies Act for registration of your name. So they will give you tell you this is already existing. So please opt for some other thing. So like that. There will be, there will be such suggestion put forth by the, the by, by way of objections from the election commission when they are going to entertain your application for registration of a political party. Now, uh, what had been uh, in vogue earlier, uh, Congress party used to have uh, Kavan Kaaf as symbol. Yeah, the uh, uh, original <laughs> Indian National Congress had the charka, the weaving charka, as the because even they posted in, in in Bangalore. If you had seen D K Shivakumar assuming office as president of the Karnataka Pradesh Congress, the flag which was handed over to the ex by the former president to him was the one which had the charka. Okay. 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 Then it uh, was having the cow cow and calf when Indira Gandhi's Congress was united with Devraj and Oberon and all one. Getting it. Anyway, became high. Things may be left aloof nowadays because uh, that 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 was an era where. Uh, Even bias issues were there, uh, and uh, sentiments sentiments also counted. When you see today, yeah. One more information: all wine stores, wine operators, wine stores, liquor uh, people are banned from using names of gods. Mm -hmm. Earlier they used to have Lakshmi Wine Store, Rakeshwara Wine Store. Today it is all banned, prohibited. It should be, it should be only Sukracharya wines. A lot of them will not know this. That's why I am just putting it across for the sake of information. Okay, sir. A question from Arjit Kundu. Uh, uh, he is saying, "Can you please enlighten the standpoint of law regarding folk songs, as happened recently in the famous Hindi song by Bacha? Are folk songs required to be copyrighted?" That's what actually folklore, etc. They come under the traditional knowledge and the cultural issues and the cultural identity is protected even by the constitution as a fundamental right. If it is an essential cultural identity 
and it, there can be uh, tagging of that particular issue with uh, the geographical indication also uh, possibly and uh, the so called um, uh, identity there is no crisis as far as uh, that kind of recognition is concerned and uh, there is no legal objection because when once you have a a folklore typical to a particular area identified and there, there are uh, instances where they are encouraged and uh, they need a protection special protection uh, uh, to be uh, given by the policy uh, makers and the political leaders in that local area they must take the right cause of those particular uh, people and the artisans and the folklores Uh, say even in uh, say in uh, andhra pradesh and uh, the neighborhood almost all the southern uh, states you have uh, surabhi uh, the art, uh, art artists they 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 live one they have only one task as an earning source also or the livelihood also uh, is to perform uh, uh, dramas the enact dramas and uh, the play and like that any folklore as, as a matter of fact uh, must deserve uh, the recognition and encouragement there ought to be financial funding and recognition of artists uh, and uh, recently yesterday only uh, many uh, so called pop singers troops they are they are almost uh, claiming that they deserve recognition and in this pandemic they are not recognized as artists and uh, they are not getting the benefits at par with those who are living under the uh, poverty line with uh, the recognizing the recognition cards given by the andhra pradesh government there and uh, they were uh, making a hue and cry this kind of uh, thing there ought to be extension of uh, such benefits to the people if you are if they are if they are even at this juncture in a pandemic situation like this they deserve uh, equal recognition and protection at par with uh, the common common indigent person okay sir see as far as folk songs are concerned and traditional songs belong into a particular community okay there is the langa community in rajasthan there are so many tribal communities is in the northeast which have their own folklore songs they are on public domain see you, Uh, suppose uh, uh, somebody says there is copyright. Well, who is the owner? Community is the owner. So whom do you go and apply? Uh, who will go and uh, go and apply for the or uh, the copyright? Can the community go and apply? Or some individual says I am representative of this or the I am the sarpanch of this community. Can I go apply? See, this is a very complex issue. Even today in India, it is not been able to be addressed properly and resolved. Called since these folklore songs are available on public domain. in belonging to one particular regional anybody is able to reuse it without violating a copyright because there is no copyright right it uh, uh, obtained for these things but they still belong um, to that particular community a tribal community or you go to the jarawa tribes in andaman nicobar islands so many such folklore songs are belonging to a particular community so there is no one individual composer who says i am the owner of it they have been there for centuries we don't know the source of the of uh, the particular folklore songs also but as long as they are in public domain people can you reuse it that's a very complex issue in india today given the vast diversities of cultural identities is and tribal communities prevailing in the chinchar the supreme court was in a position to uh, uh, to be uh, to be appreciated it was uh, paying keen interest in uh, in interpreting the expression interested person correct the interested person of that particular area may try to apply that's yeah. what the, the leaders role is required to to protect the interests of those people they are after all not aware of what is happening online and uh, these uh, people who are doing online even short videos that are uh, uh, made out made out and uh, Uh, they are trying to encash is uh, putting them in youtube etc as you Much have happily <laughs> pointed out the local leaders they must take initiative to protect them yeah. a question from linjuti bora uh, 
He says, uh, recently there are two movies, Rapta and Magadhira. It is absolutely clear that Rapta is copied from Magadhira. Still, Supreme Court decided that there is no infringement of copyright. Yeah, Magadhira. Magadhira, Rajamouli directed it. Then they? Yes, sir. And I, did, I don't know about Raftar, Raftar and so, but the, the Supreme Court already, when it is decided, no, no, that, there also, even uh, R.J. Anand case, is the theme, the central theme and uh, most of the scenes, etc., they are copied. That is, that is okay. It should not be completely, complete, uh, say mirroring uh, the same thing uh, is not permitted, otherwise it's okay, but because they have also invested a lot of amount uh, and uh, they, they are, they are uh, the, the efficacy lies with respect to the issue of uh, permitting dubbing and therefore uh, the, the producers are now uh, investing, they are forced to invest more by uh, going uh, multilingual because of this, uh, being afraid of uh, the tendency of the court, uh, the trend of the court is such that it is not accepting that uh, the central idea, the story is uh, borrowed from a particular thing. That is what uh, Prabhas fame uh, uh, picture also that has happened. Uh, original writers, uh, uh, total, total idea and uh, the theme uh, in verbatim is taken into taken and picturized as the, the, the movie. There was no remedy available. Anyway, they are, they are almost at least, they are all big people at least uh, to be uh, taken, uh, to be treated as uh, higher ups and uh, let us not worry about them. They have, they have their own uh, personal interest to protection of their personal interest by uh, engaging uh, good lawyers like Harish sir who can win our cases for them. <laughs> okay, so a uh, question from Dusna Haloi. Uh, I think our our question and answer session is dominating the sessions. <laughs> <laughs> so many more, so many more are coming. <laughs> okay. Welcome, so welcome. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the involvement of the participants and uh, for the for so, so many questions. Okay. Okay. If uh, you have more questions, they have understood better. That's correct. That's the meaning. And they, it is their subject. Owning yeah. it up, thereby uh, in this uh, in this count itself, the uh, seminar webinar is a hundred percent success. Successful. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. So uh, the question is: If a person has published an article in any mag magazine, then who will remain as owner of the copyright of the article, whether the author or the publisher of the magazine? Both, in fact, uh, they have that, and uh, this, this kind of issue we also face. My articles have been published in many and uh, online journals, but uh, the moral of the particular author it goes to say that you need to acknowledge, say that this has been the outcome of a particular presentation in a particular sem national seminar, etc., are already published in a particular domain. Say, for example, you have Liars Club of India. Uh, an online uh, website which publishes all the kinds of articles and uh, even in that you, 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 the author is expected to uh, have the minimum diligence of putting that particular thing saying that this has been published and so on so on because the authors the, as authors of articles we have a pretty small problem namely ISBN ISBN or blue book recognition UGC recognition etc. At that juncture, uh, there can be duplication of publications. Uh, suppose, say, my article relating to last scene together, it was published in uh, uh, Constitutional and Parliamentary Studies, uh, journal, journal of Constitutional and Parliamentary Studies. And uh, it was also published there in, uh, republished there in uh, uh, Lias Club of India website. Any, anything you pen down, you get the copyright. You are the owner of that. Anything I write, that is the copyright. The original source. 
at that juncture at that juncture even the publisher also has the copyright yeah that that's that's different but the composer is the author the owner of the thing is the, yes. is the composer yes. the man but who writes it script here there is no recognition or registration done that is the problem yeah okay sir so, uh, the question from garima city Uh, who have just question regarding pictures and supreme court so i asked her to make it clear and she now made it clear the question so she says can we use supreme court picture within bracket photograph of the supreme court in any website example a law firm want to use supreme court picture on their website can they use supreme court picture on their website are there any restriction regarding using supreme court pictures if yes then under what intellectual property law it's covered do we have to pay a license fee in order to use the same so far there is nothing like that but uh, you are not expected to use supreme court picture uh, in your website it is for prohibited generally known fact and uh, uh, that comes under the, the violation of uh, even even one may be sued for contempt because it is the supreme court's picture generally speaking when uh, when we are putting a particular uh, decision pertaining to say publishers in the newspapers they put uh, uh, the picture of the supreme court uh, or uh, a particular sports person there uh, uh, like a lawyer uh, when when they publish a particular uh, case uh, or case related matter then there is there is permission but for a website you can't use anything like that and uh, there is no specific uh, uh, law which prohibits it but uh, what i think is uh, the there there is uh, um, this 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 should generous issue uh, which can be taken note of a question from uh, nitin galot uh, after an invention is ready for utility in public domain and then there are grave and harmful aftermath and consequences that come to public that come to general public utility in that circumstances who will face the liability the welfare state or the inventor himself both both suppose say Patent invention. You are talking about invention, whether it is recognized, registered or not, is a question. First, it should be registered, and then only it should be put to uh, public uh, domain and uh, usage. Uh, here at this juncture, you you have uh, Carlyle versus Carbolic Smoke Ball Company, even Donau versus Stevenson. Immediate neighbor is permission. Ginger, ginger beer case. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's correct both both are liable not only the public nowadays and the, the, the advent of uh, the information technology act the publishers whoever publishes such things if they if it is hazardous to the public they are liable immediately and then ultimately the particular uh, so called inventor of a spurious and hazardous substance a question from dipavati uh, brahma what is the formal procedure of making trips agreement between the parties trips agreement ha trips agreement is a multilateral treaty na sir exactly sir it is it is for the wipo and uh, wto to consider and un you should be a, a country to be recognized nothing to go with it individual i think so World Trade Organization members are signatories to the TRIPS. Exactly. Whoever is a member of the WTO, only they are signatories to the TRIPS. So that particular person who should be should be recognized as a nation first, and then try for all, such. All your intellectual property law in any nation, whoever is a member of the WTO and who is a signatory to TRIPS, will have to align their laws in tune with the TRIPS agreement. That's the uh, system. I think so. So nothing to do with individual authority, not it. Yes. Yes. Your your laws in your country will take care of individual rights and uh, infringement. Exactly. So uh, 
Mukherjee Sunwal. Mukherjee Sunwal is putting a question that uh, I would like to know from you that what practical steps should we take to obtain patent protection? Patent protection? Yes. Uh, is, uh, suppose in for, for for the purpose of South India, we have uh, a patent office situated in Chennai. We need to approach with the proper procedure and uh, show them the uh, particular product. It should be patented. Uh, there should be the nuances and other things highlighted. And uh, you need to, uh, th that will be put in uh, the so-called uh, freezer for some time and then only there can be uh, hearing objections from others. Whoever is interested, uh, there, there will be uh, the registration done. For that, uh, the prescribed fee and others are uh, okay, nominal, but there is a lengthy procedure. I think so. He will be getting the answer more appropriately in Himesar's presentation because he will be dealing elaborately regarding on patents. Yes. Practice and procedures. So, uh, Mr. Not Actually, yes, exactly. It, it, it was just an overview session. Yes. Uh, today, online submission of applications is possible because you don't have to run to Chennai to first apply. Yes. It's all available online. Only to show the product and other things there where you may have to physically be present too. And in this pandemic, everything is postponed. Yeah. Okay. So, Mukherjee Sunwal, please wait for day three. You will be getting your answer in a very appropriate manner. From him no, 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 need not be, need not be. You just uh, you, you need to file the application in the proper format. Online, you can file it's online. Fine. Application can be filed online. Yeah. What is required is that suppose a particular product is made out that we showed every every such every such minute ingredient of that particular product and the nuance that is uh, uh, that should be established there and then only your application will be entertained and. Uh, then it will be it will going it will be going into the so called dormant or freezing uh, stage. Uh, so yeah. question from Dr. Suranjana Kalita: uh, If a filmmaker makes a film with the story of another film of different language without mentioning the name of that particular film, then is it violation of copyright? You had already given an example of uh, uh, what is that movie? Magadira. Magadira, yeah. But but by and large, uh, nowadays what the judges are doing, uh, they, they they will definitely look into both the pictures. And first censor must censor board must be given this uh, particular uh, additional burden of verifying whether there is. Uh, the so-called plagiarism and copying of the central theme, etc., including central theme also. And I think uh, the, it is desirable for uh, adding a particular obligation on the part of the board. Uh, very interesting. Uh, person, yes, you can register. Oh, no. a, you can even register a formula like Coca-Cola. Till today, nobody knows the formula. The process can also be registered, not necessarily the product alone. The process also can be registered. The formula is nothing but the process. Till today, Coca Cola, nobody is able to know who's or the formula at all. There are some certain local companies in in East Godavari district. There is one company almost competing with Coca Cola, which yeah. and it it has got a, it's a, I think a buy. Uh, a, a subsidiary company of a sugar manufacturing company, and they are making it yeah. a unique, unique Coca Cola. Nobody can see earlier. You had Campa Cola. There was a drink called Campa Cola, Agriculture Product uh, Products Cooperative Society. That is the yes. word Campo. Uh, uh, Campa Cola was there, which was uh, which is today not there. So they were also trying to no, bring in uh, some like Pepsi Cola, Campa Cola. So question from uh, Deepavali Brahma. He is saying that recently China invented apps and software have been removed. According to you, what do you think? Is it a is it a violation of copyright and patent act or unfair trade practice? No, actually, there is nothing uh, to 
you they the, the so called companies these are all amenable to the policy initiatives of a particular company or a particular country or a nation we have our own sovereign power to allow or disallow and we have uh, that uh, for that matter suppose say you have uh, what is called uh, the exclusive recognition to the so called most favored nation status given to and withdrawal of that and it goes to the uh, question of uh, sovereignty of a particular nation and uh, you, in public interest that is being done even if you are questioning it uh, you don't have a fundamental right to uh, recognition or imposing ban on a particular thing because in public interest only is it done okay sir uh, uh, from dr mosumi kalita whether buying an original work means we are acquiring the acquire, acquiring the copyright in it original yes sir. whether buying an original work means we are acquiring the copyright in it definitely and it will depends upon the facts and circumstances of each case work means what, what kind of work is it if it is if it is worth copyrighted definitely you are when when you are buying you have an agreement with the particular maker and uh, that is what is happening with respect to so many companies and firms where say for example in jendu pharmaceuticals you have many scientists working there working there and they produce they have a target to produce original works and it's automatically obviously bought by the companies and the companies they exercise the company exercises uh, the, that right and enjoys the right and as far as individual is concerned you don't have a possibility to uh, breach the contract when you are you know, when you are doing something for them or when you are selling it to, to somebody there's how stories written by several uh, authors they are sold to the producers okay sir so uh, probably this is the last question and that question is very very related and specific to assam sir uh, the question is by amrita priyam the gamusa that is considered to be a privileged part of assam are generally hand woven by the weavers of assam with lot of efforts in it but now it is being machine weaved by some other states and sold back to assam in cheap rates is it not infringement it, it is it is if uh, gamusa has been registered say for example in uh, karnataka also we have a particular kind of sarees uh, uh, man uh, made handloom sarees made in uh, um, near uh, hubli what is that area harish sir uh, il ilkal sire ilkal uh, sarees ilkal ilkal sarees i also bought them uh, i have gifted it to my half heart uh, for her uh, for her surprise because generally i don't buy anything for her <laughs> by, by by the way they that is ai recognized what gamusa or the people associated with that handloom weaving community they need pagal coat ilkal pagal coat gi gi is the solution and uh, now uh, machine made uh, things they are they are there until you are you you get the this kind of gi recognition or tag all mark the silk mark you mm. have all these thing on sari you have the silk mark that's correct that's correct yes sir i think so that's the geographical indication is a solution i think yes, yes. so there is no other that question left last, now. is it necessary to be registered getting protection under ip rights yes how to get protection if not registered if not registered you don't have any such a protection possible and unless you are uh, an author of a particular book or uh, anything like that so in participants uh, in silk mark you have the silk mark uh, organization of india which gives the recognition for the silk mark uh, for all the silk sari yeah silk board our silk board Yeah, no. Silk Mark Organization of India. There's a body which gives yes. you license for putting the silk mark. Yeah. Oh, 
there's another body yeah there's a body for that hari sir yes just a question from me just the confusion sir which one no no i am just uh, telling you there's an organization the by name silk uh, not organization sir uh, whether it will be coming under the geographical indication act which one silk marka uh, yeah silk mark organization no no but uh, you don't have uh, such uh, categorization anyway uh, that uh, harish sir only no anybody can apply for it and obtain if you want if you are so popular geographically yeah, in that area yeah. suppose see in, in goa some of the liquor is only sold in goa it's not sold outside yeah. some of them is manufactured only in goa so geographically also see the geography indication anybody can apply depending on you fulfill their requirements and satisfy the compliances sir you should be unique you should be unique unique that's what and they would they would definitely search whether there is mysore in mysore goa penny is unique goa penny is unique yeah that's correct that's correct it's goa it's yes, made of cashew fruits yeah. you get coconut penny cashew penny variety of penny is available in goa we we are tea totlers sir we don't have any sir no I, sir there is a thing in in a court uh, in in karnataka i court there was a matter on up going on Where okay. some UB cork manufacturer subcontracting had been given, the the advocate appearing for that cork manufacturer had appeared and had, had failed to pay some taxes. I think so on on the contract tax and the sales contract. So justice, uh, uh, I don't know which uh, high court judge, uh, probably it was Justice Rajendra Babu. The counsel was asked by the judge, judge, uh, 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 I'm given to understand. I mean, the uh, UB is the best beer in the world. So the council <laughs> appearing for this court manufacturer said, "Sir, I am a tea totaler. I don't know." Yeah, so the judge right. uh, immediately, uh, immediate reporter was judge said, "I am, I too am a tea totaler, but I still know that it is the best beer in the world." So <laughs> no fact, you don't know, you did not drink because but there are I, surveys which will give you the information. So, so information, the information, information of a good or a bad thing is divine. Experiences may be devilish. Information that there is statutory warning on the cigarette pack, injurious to health, is a good information about a bad habit. But the information is still good. To know that drinking is injurious to health is a good information. Hi, sir. Yes, thank you. Sir, am I audible to you? Yeah, yeah, I am able to hear you. Uh, actually, you said something regarding patent society. Not before uh, while answering some questions. No, you said something about patent society, society. Performing right society of India. Okay, okay. So, sir, my question that's is that whether uh, copying is, your CDs, taking uh, the, that's a society which collects, takes care of royalties, to okay. collection to be made to people who are singers, authors, composers of music, lyrics. That's the society. Sir, it is. Uh, sir, whether it is similar to that of the copyright society, sir. No, it is not. It, it 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 is not similar. This is a governing body that is created by the uh, the performers, so that uh, they don't have to every now and then and uh, go and ask royalty from each person who is using their works. So this society will okay. is a, a is a intermediary agency which will take care of this and regulate all these things, giving licenses to them to use their works and to pay royalty. Suppose a company wants to duplicate series of of. Uh, Uh, a corporate company wants to, for its 25th anniversary, wants to duplicate series uh, of songs come uh, sung by Lata Mangeshkar exclusively and give it to its all its uh, clients, vendors on the occasion of Silver Jubilee. Then you need to take permission from this because you are duplicating okay. that. Ah, see, that's okay. the so that's why it's perform. You have to pay royalty to them. They will then pass it on to the original authors. That's the so the performers' right society of India. Okay, sir. So it was a personal question from my part, sir. Yeah, no, your personal, public, all the same format. <laughs> okay, answer, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. So just which uh, I'll just like to say to all the participants that uh, whatever question have been put in the chat box, I have already forwarded it to the resource person, and hopefully the both of our uh, esteemed resource person have clarified those questions and given the answers. 
uh, up to our satisfaction. So my last query to all of you that if you want to directly communicate with uh, any of our resource person, you can just raise your hand and we can unmute you so that you can directly put your question to our resource person. Anyone? Gautami ma'am, do you ask, do you want to ask any question? I am actually seeing a raising, raising hand. Okay, I am unmuting Arjit Kundu. You can ask your question. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, but you are not visible. Please yeah. put on your camera, sir. Okay. What's happening? Arjit sir, yeah. yes we are seeing, you can put your questions. Yeah, I wanted to ask uh, the respected uh, sirs that uh, what is the position of law regarding uh, Indian epics like the Ram Ramayana or the Mahabharata. So if anybody wants to remake on those things, uh, what is the uh, current uh, legal standpoint on that? What is that? Can you please repeat the question? Yeah, I can, I can. Yeah, so my uh, so my question is that uh, what is the legal point or the legal standpoint that regarding uh, the remaking of uh, movies or writing a book on the Ramayana or the Mahabharata? For example, if I write if I want to write a book on uh, the Ramayana, so do I have to approach anybody for uh, uh, copyright or something like that? Thank you, sir. I got it. Sir. Harish sir, uh, Prosenjit, let me call uh, Mohan Rao sir. Maybe some network issue. No, no, Mohan Mohan Rao has already been entered. I have already entered. Okay. You can please add uh, Harish sir. You can please add Harish sir. Harish sir is Harish sir is not there, sir. Please send Harish. Bola sir. Are you hearing me? Am I audible to you, sir? Hello. Hello. Uh, Prosenjit, unmute. Uh, Bola, sir. Bola, sir, I have been already unmuted. I am made a co host. Sir, you are. Sir, you are co host. You can unmute yourself. Sir, please unmute yourself, sir. Not finding out, sir. We got disconnected. Bolas, I got disconnected. Okay, 
Okay, Prosenjit. Bonvasan yeah. is getting reconnected, but he is not able to enter. Okay. Some problem. The network issue. Oh oh. What about uh, what about Harish sir? And sir, what about Harish sir? Uh, I'm not seeing him. Uh, uh, Prosenjit, please ask the participants to kindly hold patience for at least few seconds. Okay, so okay, okay. They, are, they, are, they are hearing. They are hearing. So there are some technical issues. Please cope up with that. Okay. I think I can rejoin now. Yes, sir. Harish sir is not responding to call. Okay, okay. What is the question? Is it for him specifically? No, no. It's not like that, sir. He has not put any questions specifically. Sir. It was an open question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the question was that uh, um, in case of Ramayana or Mahabharata. That is the Vedic book or Epic. whatever it may be, the ancient literature. Yes, sir. Epic. So if uh, today I decide, the question is that if today I decide to write a book, okay, sir, Harish sir is here. I'll just make him. Yeah. Okay. No problem. You go on with uh, the question. I'm just making him co-host. Harish sir, now you are co-host. You can admit yourself. Yeah. Yes, sir. So the question is that uh, in case of epic books uh, like Ramayana, Mahabharata, or whatever it may be, if uh, tomorrow I decide that I will write a book on Ramayana or Mahabharata, whatever it may be, or if I think that tomorrow I'll um, uh, go for a drama or um, make a movie or make a serial or whatever it may be, it may be literary work or any other thing. So in case in these cases, from whom I shall take the permission? Is there any authority? To whom I should approach? Relating to Ramayana. Yeah. A anybody can do that, and uh, you need to produce the movie, and uh, then approach uh, the uh, cinematographers under the cinematographers act. You have uh, the procedure for uh, censorship, etc., and then do that. And even suppose say. Uh, there was a uh, book called Ramayana Vishamoksha, criticizing the Ramayana. You, you, you have a right to expression guaranteed as a fundamental right. Tomorrow, if you are taking a decision to write a book on Ramayana, it's okay. Your, your own interpretation, it can be appreciated or pro provided you do not offend, offend anyone's feelings. A lot of people have written on Ramayana. C. Rajagopalachari, the first and last Governor General of India, has written Mahabharata. Has written Mahabharata. Yes. So, uh, and that's a, no that is his own version. Yeah. Rajagopalari is Maharashtra, Mahabharata. So also uh, when Bhagavad Gita, you have uh, several such authors, including uh, C. D. Deshmukh. Union Minister Virappa Moili has written on Ramayana, I think. Yes. Perhaps. There is no problem and producing a movie you have you have to uh, undergo the process of cinema under the cinematographer's act. Okay sir. So the Nitin Galot. Yes, I am just unmuting you. You can unmute and put your question directly. It's not Nitin, Nitin Galot. Galot. <laughs> no, it's not Nitin Gatari. <laughs> Nitin Galop, are you hearing me? I'm attempting to unmute you. You can unmute yourself. Okay, yes. 
मोस्टली सिंगर दिस ओन सोशियल नेटवर्क सिमिलर टू डेट ऑफ फेसबुक कैन दैट पर्सन कैन क्लेम पेटेंट फॉर दैट न्यू डेवलपमेंट डेफिनेटली व्हाई नॉट द पेटेंट्स पेटेंट्स अथॉरिटी विल वेरीफाई वेदर देयर इज एनी प्रॉब्लम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द दिस ऑफ कॉल सपोज नेम यू शैल नॉट यूज नेटवर्क आर परमिशिबल अप्रोच द इंटरनेशनल फोरम फॉर डोमेन रिकॉग्निशन दैट इज द ओनली प्रॉब्लम आर यू सर से फॉर एग्जांपल यू हैव व्हाट इज कॉल्ड एलिमेंट एलिमेंट्स सिमिलर टू दैट ऑफ ज़ूम व्हाट इज सजेस्टेड इवन बाय रवि शंकर अ गुरु and even uh, the, there are some who are trying to encourage that uh, elements just similar to that of zoom you have similar similar service uh, agencies like webex uh, etc even available in the international forum if a local entrepreneur comes forward okay. to do something similar to that of uh, facebook nothing uh, comes in the way except to purchase a domain name and uh, Uh, website designing. Okay, sir. So I think uh, I have answered Gautam uh, Dutta's question. Ma'am, I am unmuting you. Yes, yeah, she is uh, there. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good. Thank you very much. Good. Had you been that particular person initiating uh, to start a uh, similar? a uh, website like uh, facebook no 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 yeah. no i am not that that this particular person is something that somebody different okay okay good thank good. you sir thank you good 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 question yeah present yeah, i think so we have end so i yeah. think so we have end up all the questions uh, there is no raising and there is no queries uh, i have okay. not seen anything in the chat box for last few minutes okay. but still there there is a last option if anyone want to ask any question you can please raise your hand you can directly communicate with our resource person except uh, that when will you wind up the session sir accepting a question uh, i am not like as when you when the session <laughs> okay 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 questions are welcome there might be some network issue so no question sir yeah no question no question thanks very much for giving okay. this uh, opportunity is wonderful done well wonderfully well especially the, the question and answer session with the intervention by harish sir okay. as i added a silver lining for uh, the program Thanks thank very much. Thank you, thank you for having. Thank you for the patient uh, listening and hearing and participation to each one of the participants, and uh, special appreciation to Preeta and Prasenjit. Ah, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My my <laughs> appreciation to Preeta and to Prasenjit. Okay, nice meeting. Hi, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, thank you so much for oh. joining. Pleasure, <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. Always. Yes, yes. You, you you can always get in touch with me for anything I, whatever yes, i know sir. i can always share i have noted your email id as well oh, <laughs> i will yeah, yeah. 
love you sometime <laughs> oh, sure. for your for your kind information sir was instrumental in getting our students uh, bagging the um, uh, winners winners prize uh, in the parliamentary model parliament competition i want to call it model parliament competition model parliament competition uh, okay nice sir yeah you can do this in parliamentary procedure by conducting model parliament for law students uh, last 30 years yes 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 yes, yes sir and uh, sir is well known for that you might utilize his services in that regard. and model un yes, also mm. we'll we look model for model un we'll try sir here and, yes. uh, and even i think we can coordinate with uh, these two colleges yeah last last yes, sir, definitely definitely 20 last uh, last week i was the chief guest inaugurating the first virtual model united nations in delhi public school east bangalore first oh, oh, virtual okay, one, online okay. i was the chief guest who inaugurated that on, online right. so definitely no, no, we are also very keen on we, we are very keen on training rather <laughs> than that the, 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 the so called inauguration of virtual platform but uh, uh-huh. we go for go for training Online in in seven in nineteen ninety seven, Rita in nineteen ninety seven, I had conducted a national model parliament competition in Delhi when P S Sangma was the speaker. After oh. the program, I took the students to P S Sangma's house for a tea with him to to meet oh. him. That yeah. time his daughter Agatha Sangma was a small little girl. Okay. <laughs> that was uh, because fifty years Golden Jubilee India's Independence Day celebration from all twenty five states we had uh, made twenty twenty students to come from each state to Delhi for a ten days training to do a national model parliament uh, program of two day session. I think a similar thing uh, must have written a book on the parliamentary procedure on that occasion, which was uh, yes, uh, which is published. Okay, uh, I will I will uh, contact you for that about the information of that book, sir. Yeah. yeah. You have YMCA in your part, so they will. They are the ones who are coordinating with me to do these things. They will host oh, okay, it also. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mohan Rao, sir, good to see you after uh, six years. <laughs> <laughs> six years, six long yes. years. Six long years. And, uh, and uh, we we have special appreciation to Preeta for several reasons, including the fact that you are the secretary of your own Kakrajar Kakraj. There are Kokrajar, 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 Kokrajar. A unique place in uh, Bodo Land. Bodo Land, sir. <laughs> uh, a unique place in Bodo Land, and I did not have this kind of information about you uh, at that time. <laughs> uh, very good, very good. Pleasure, sir. Pleasure, pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Kola, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, for yeah. giving your precious time to us and for your wonderful deliberation regarding the various aspects of intellectual property rights. Because, sir, sir, just my point is that this first session was very, very important, and I hope so. Whatever we thought, it has been achieved because uh, it is this session through which the participant can open their doors. That what are the various subject matter of intellectual property rights? Because the next four days. Are directly on some specific subject matter. It will not be an overall or in general regarding intellectual property rights. So I think so. You have helped them, help all the participants, including me and the organizing committee, to know the various aspects of intellectual property rights. We have cited so many case laws that are basically recent in nature of the Supreme Court, Honorable Supreme Court. Uh, you have given insight regarding all the patent, copyright, and all those things. So now the participants will be happy, and they will also be coming to know that what are the things that we will be learning in the next four days. Because uh, I would just like to inform you, sir, because the participants are multidisciplinary in nature and all from law background. So yeah. many many participants are there who are who are students who have not studied the intellectual property law till yet. They are various research scholars from other subjects like English, political science, and all those things. They are faculty members from mathematics, uh, philosophy. Then chemistry and physics, so they do not know anything about intellectual property law. This is what I presume. And actually, okay. today's your insightful speech was very, very good. Uh, and I actually thank uh, Harish sir who have joined you, and he has <laughs> actually spent his precious yeah. time with us by helping you in giving the answers. And also, I also learned so many things with him. So thank you to both of you, sir.
and we can both tell you yes. theory on one coin on one side of the coin is theory and the other side is practice <laughs> practice <laughs> and uh, we both are two sides of the same coin, coin. <laughs> okay <laughs> both are two sides of the same coin yes okay, sir. <laughs> so we supplementary <laughs> complement okay. each other in our uh, uh, deliberation endeavors and for okay, doing uh, this task of uh, making legal education uh, an excellent uh, uh, have a new for anybody and i congratulate each one of the students of both the colleges and uh, the various participants from uh, various uh, universities and uh, colleges thank you very much thank you so thank much you. Sir. thank you thank, thank you so much all, all, all the best god bless you okay all the best okay i had sir we'll continue our efforts in uh, making the other events also more successful <laughs> okay definitely sir Now we have a hope that we will be meeting you physically, sir, soon. Okay. You, 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 you. Asian people should become as sharp as your your uh, most uh, spiciest uh, chili, boot jalokya. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. So, uh, dear participants, uh, we have a little bit of time. And uh, I think uh, we are going to get uh, the link for the, the next programs also. So definitely, definitely, you will be getting it. You will be getting it for the next four days. You will be getting it for the next four days, and whenever you feel comfortable, you can definitely join. You can interact with the participant. You can interact with the other resource person, and it will be very helpful for us for a very fruitful discussion. Sir, thank you. Bola, sir, we need to go to their college one day to to. Yes, sir, definitely, we will welcome you. We look forward for that. We look forward for that, and we will do that. Okay. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Because uh, Preeta is all in one, and uh, she can make uh, uh, all these all such efforts. And uh, I think uh, <laughs> in the very yes. near future, we need to attend her marriage first, and then look for. Satya, Satya. I can offer you to. Uh, I can do one thing on parliamentary procedure and constitution yes, and things like that. Online. Okay, Definitely sir. Definitely, sir. We'll plan to do it, sir. Yes. Talk yes. for it, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. We take leave of you. Okay. Sir. So, dear participants, uh, you will be getting soon the link for giving your feedback for our resource person of today's session. Apart from it, you will be in the same link. You will be getting the few questions that have been that need to be answered by you all. Uh, And you need to submit the feedback form along with your questionnaire uh, till within four o'clock. I think so. Yes, within four o'clock. Answered so questions. Please, uh, yes, sir. Answered questions. With the answer. Yes, answered answer question. <laughs> yes, sir. Answered <laughs> question till four p.m. today, sir. Yeah, they are okay. MCQs. Multiple choice questions. Bola, Happy Bola, answers there in. Sanjay, Dr. Yes, sir. Bola, sir, and me are yes, like sir. academics in action. <laughs> he is academics and in action. Okay. We are academics and action. We are two sides of the same coin. So both okay, sir. Okay. Theory and practice together. Yes, 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 sir. Thank yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot.